It was an ugly moment. It was a moment best forgotten in one respect, but the sheer ugliness of what happened should be called to mind, and perhaps we can learn from the heat of battle how somehow or other the authority is more important than anything else on the field. And perhaps it was a reflection of a disappointed Cincinnati Reds team that has gotten off to such a dreadful start. And there was another ugly moment here at Dodger Stadium. First a breaking ball hitting Guerrero, then the slung bat, then the angry tempers boiling over. Hopefully they have both been repentant and have paid. Pete Rose and Pedro Guerrero. Today they're on the field trying to win in the game of the week featuring the Dodgers and the Reds. National Broadcasting Company. Now in its seventh decade of bringing you baseball's memories. Baseball's milestones. Baseball's majesty. And baseball's magical moments. C Sports proudly presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today from Dodger Stadium, it's the Cincinnati Reds versus the Los Angeles Dodgers. Toyota, there's quality, then there's Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? And by Quaker State Motor Oil, the big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola. Welcome to Dodger Stadium, where the Dodgers are happily ensconced, a game and a half in front of Houston, and the Cincinnati Reds a sullen seven and a half games back. They are. The, the bench was uh, after last night's ball game, but I think the big thing, uh, Vin, is the big meeting that Pete Rose was having. Uh, we tried to do an interview with him, but he, he's been in there for, I guess, a good 45 minutes. Well, you have to understand that the Reds are belabored and beleaguered by injuries. They are also a disappointing ball club to their owner, Marge Schott, who presented Pete with a bridal veil opening day, telling him, in other words, that she was sick and tired of being a bridesmaid, even to go to the extent last night of calling the clubhouse and talking to the Reds on a speakerphone. Well, I did talk to Pete very early this morning, and he said that that was pretty much like a love call. You know, hang in there, guys. And as far as the bridal veil, I said to Pete, are you feeling any pressure about getting fired, getting that bridal veil? And he says, listen, she tells me to hang in there, but when your club loses six or seven games in a row, you better get it in gear. He said she wouldn't fire me, and I believe her when she says that if she did, she wouldn't be able to go to the a &P without an armed guard. Well, they've lost six straight, eight out of nine, ten out of twelve, and I also wonder if they had won last night, if Marge wouldn't have said, well, my phone call finally got them squared away. Well, I tell you, I've heard about hands-off owners, and maybe she is, <laughs> but hands-off owners to me, Ben, are like good curveball hitters. I hear about them, but I rarely see them. Tell you one thing, it'll take a lot more than a phone call to get P. Rose at Red squared away. We'll see if they can do it today against the first-place Dodgers. We'll We'll have the starting lineups and all the pregame stats and stories coming up right after this. A beautiful day in Southern California, Dodger Stadium, the host of the NBC Game of the Week, the ballpark that opened up in 1962. 330 down the lines, falling away to the power alleys of 385. It's 395 and then 400 to dead center. As the umpires slowly make their way to home plate, Doug Harvey, the crew chief and senior umpire, will be behind the plate. Frank Pooley will be at first. Steve Ripley is at second, and Jerry Crawford is the umpire at third. We uh, talked with the umpires before the game about the uh, statement that was in the paper where the crew chiefs in the American League in a conference call with Richie Phillips uh, really did not like the backing that... Bobby Brown had given the umpires in the uh, Billy Martin incident and uh, they were quoted in the paper here as having said if Billy Martin wants to stay in the game he better sit on the bench with his lips sealed and his hands folded now the umpires when I talked to him and I, I said to Jerry Crawford 
are the umpires today more aggressive than ever? And he had an answer. Well, Joe, I grew up uh, with an umpire in my family, and I don't necessarily agree with that perception. Uh, I will say that uh, a young umpire coming into this league should be aggressive uh, because it's a very difficult league to, to uh, be in. And uh, if you're not aggressive and do not handle situations properly, uh, there's a perception by the players that uh, they might be able to get something by you. And it's a lot easier to calm a young umpire down than it is to pump an umpire up. So says Jerry Crawford, and of course his father, Shag Crawford, umpired in the National League for so many, many years. How do you feel about it? I tell you one thing, if I were Billy Martin, uh -huh. or even George Steinbrenner, but particularly Billy Martin, I could use that, I think. I could be on the field all day long, and I wonder if they could have, because he knows now if he does get chased, he's already uh, got a trump card because of this pre-statement. Well, that's what I said to him. I said, the umpires now are placed in a no-win situation, right. because if I'm Billy Martin, I'm going to go out there very politely say, I think the sun is shining very brightly today. That's and right. if they don't run him, they're backing down on mm -hmm. it. And, uh, uh, the other thing I brought up is if you're going to police the players and worry about backing from the president, who's going to police the umpire who follows the player all the way to the bench in the join contest? There's a man who probably raised that question several times over the last 30 days. Pete is back now. While he was out for a 30-day suspension, his team was 12 and 15. The Reds were three and a half games back before he went out. We're five and a half games back when he came back, and they are seven and a half games back as they begin to start today's game. Let's get to the lineups now as the Dodgers take the field. Oral Hershiser getting ready to try and get Barry Larkin, Chris Sabo, and Cal Daniels. Eric Davis in center field. Paul O'Neill will be in right. Nick Asoski at first. Bo Diaz behind the plate. It'll be Jeff Treadway at second base. He goes against right-handers. And Ron Robinson on the mound. Hershiser with a record of 7-2. and two, No record against the Reds. 8-4 and four lifetime. Take a look at the Dodger defense. And, uh, Vin, obviously you've seen them more than most of us. Uh, Dodger defense is, is what really takes a lot of the criticism. Shelby in, the, in center field has to cover a lot of ground. He's got help from Gibson and Davis. Guerrero at third base has put the adventure back into the ground ball. Anderson at shortstop. Sachs at second base. Marshall at first base will give you a thrill. And so should behind the plate. It's a surprise, and it also sums up Oral Hershiser is playing for a team that is a much better defensive team going into the game, at least, than the Cincinnati Reds. The Dodgers, much maligned defensively, have made 35 errors. The Reds, as they get ready, have made 54 errors. Hershiser, by the way, a very good pitcher and particularly successful at home. He is 4-1 and one this year, 3-1 and one on the road. But lifetime, he has always been better at home. And he is a run tougher. His earned run average is in the twos at home and the threes on the road. So when you face Hershiser, you're in for a fight anyway, especially here at this ballpark. Well, it's a big ballpark, and home runs is, is not his, uh, he doesn't give up that many. You should see a lot of ground balls. Uh, I tell you, make it even a little more interesting with the home plate being in front of it, being as hard as it is. That ball was taking a big bounce uh, during batting practice, but Hershiser is just simply a tough pitcher. Well, we're talking about how tough he is and how tough he is particularly at Dodger Stadium. And one other note as to the challenge the Reds have, how tough Hershiser is in the daytime. He is 50 and 25 in the day and under 500 at night. So the Reds have a formidable task. Barry Larkin, Chris Sabo, and Cal Daniels will test him in the first inning. One ball and no strikes. There are those who watch the Reds day in and day out, and they say Barry Larkin is the best player on the team. Well, with a 305 average, five home runs, 19 RBIs, a chopper to short, set for the throw as Anderson to get it. In looking at the Dodger defensive team, don't forget this kid. He is playing for Alfredo Griffin, and in Griffin's stead, he has made only one error. He has played very, very well. Another difference in this team from last, the Dodgers had a hole in the infield that could have sunk the Queen Mary last year. The hole was at shortstop. 
They made 35 errors at that position last year. This year, they've only made four, and Anderson has made one. And here is Chris Sabo, who is definitely in the run as a rookie of the year. He's having a fine start. He took advantage of the knee trouble that Bell had and promptly bangs this one inside third and down the line. And Sabo is on his way for two. Gibson, an accurate throw, just too late. Well, that's something they'll do. They'll challenge Kirk Gibson. Uh, Guerrero was playing off the line, and Sabo was able to pull that ball between third base and the back. Gibson got over there in good shape, but uh, Sabo never did stop. Here's the throw by Gibson. But Sabo running all the way makes it easily. I tell you, this Cincinnati ball club, they have some good-looking young ball players, man. Oh, and how. When you look at them and you see Tracy Jones, who, by the way, is on the disabled list, but when you look at Cal Daniels, Eric Davis, and Tracy Jones, backed up by Paul O'Neill, you look at Sabo at third, Larkin at short, they really have some kids. And Jeff Treadway at second base. And if a team is as strong up the middle, well, then look at the Reds, because you have Larkin, Treadway, and in center field, Eric Davis. They're, they're moving in the right direction, much like the Cubs. Here's Cal Daniels. The thing about the Reds when you talk about them moving, three years in a row, they've come in second, and you keep waiting for them to put it all together, and this year, they've gone the other way around. This was supposed to be the year. Without a doubt. 0-1 oh to Cal to Daniels. He homered last night. Just to give you another plight for Cincinnati in their last 12 games, they've had three home runs, that's all. Two of them by Lloyd McClendon, and then last night Daniels hit one out against Valenzuela. So the Cincinnati Ball Club is hurting in every area imaginable. One ball, one strike. Anderson trying to bird dog on a pickball play, and Sabo just got back. Say that was a good move by Hershiser because uh, shortstop Anderson really got over there in good shape once Sabo made a like a dance step towards third. That, that was an ad lib play. Now right there, and Anderson really got some daylight between him. I thought he had him. He just does get in there. Hershiser has had a pickoff this year. He's pretty quick. One ball and one strike. Two and one. Those plays, Vin, always work even if you don't get the man because what it simply does is cut down that lead at least a step and you give your outfielders a chance to throw them out at the plate and it makes your ball club look good like they're in the game. It's also an indication of whether the runner is a good runner or not, whether he's intimidated and gives up a step. And, of course, you have a rookie out there in Sabo and he has not had the biggest lead that he had a few moments ago. Three and one. Here's the other angle. As he goes back in there, that throw it had been at the knees where Anderson could have made that quick drop, and they would have nipped him. Three and one to count to Cal Daniels. On deck, Eric Davis. The Reds scored in the first inning last night. Eric Davis and Cal Daniels are the men who are to provide the sock, and they have been striking out too much. Between them, they have 87 strikeouts already this year which means they fail to advance, they fail to do anything. <laughs> Sosha and Hersizer cannot get together, and now he's going to go out and talk to him. He is shaking him off three different times, and uh, I say shaking him off, he hasn't moved his head, but he just stared him down, and Mike finally walked out there, and I'm sure like all catchers said, what do you want to do? <laughs> I don't think that Sabo is stealing any signs. I wouldn't worry about him. Uh, they're using more than one flash, and I think Sabo is more worried about getting the lead and stealing signs. You can see the length of his biggest lead and where he is now. 3-1 pitch is ball four. So Daniels, who leads the league in walks, and Hershiser in somewhat of a jam. First and second, one out in the first inning, and Eric Davis coming up. Davis is a local boy, born here in Los Angeles. He went to Fremont High School. 
and a Dodger Stadium hitting only 238. He might have the Daryl Strawberry Blues. It took Strawberry a couple of years to come to Dodger Stadium and not try too hard. It could be Eric's problem. Certainly could. All your friends come, and you're going to show them just how good you are. A pickoff play to get Sabo. They got him. Yes, sir. He was dead. And that's another reason why the Reds are where they are. They have been poor in every area. And now Sabo is hung out to dry from Hershiser to Sachs, one to four. That's one of those aggressive mistakes. And Vin, just to play off what you said before, he did not cut down his lead, which shows the aggressiveness, but he just got a little bit too far. He was relying on his own instincts to watch Anderson, and Sachs came in there, and they got him. Good move by Hirschheiser. Excellent play. So now Davis up there with two out, and Daniels at first. Check swing. They're going to look down at first. Swing, says Frank Poole. And the count on one. Eric Davis, a remarkable talent. Last year, he was a member of the 30-30 club. 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases. The earliest ever, August the 2nd, he did it. However, he has really gone in a tailspin since a year ago. I mean, on this date one year ago, Davis, his name was linked with Willie Mays. He had 19 home runs, 52. Look at all that. Today, he's barely a third in home runs, way down in the batting area. And there was one other statistic last year. Home runs caught. Remember, he was in that streak where he was catching balls, going over the fence, four of them. So he was going to lead the league in home runs and home runs caught. He hasn't had a home run since the 14th of May, and he has been plagued by a hamstring. In fact, he played right field a couple of days so he wouldn't have to run so much. One and one to Eric Davis. How do you like that stance? Frank Pooley, the umpire, has at first base. I've never seen that at first base before. Kneeling out of respect for all the major league talent here in the ballpark. That must be from his days as an altar boy. <laughs> that's, that's a genuflection that's by what the first is. base umpire, Frank Pooley. <laughs> that's a new one. Is he watching for the balk or what? One and one. There's a strike. One and two the count. Well, I know one thing. This game will drive you to your knees <laughs> one way or the other. Toronto tried to do it to Boston, talking about knees. Burks and Devon. And the Cubs and Mets scoreless. Les Lancaster, who just beat Cincinnati last time out, against Ron Darling, who beat the Dodgers last time out. That was another thing about the Reds. They lost three to the Cubs, including complete game victories by Les Lancaster and a shutout by a kid just brought up from the minors, Jeff Pico. It's been a tough trip. Mm. They're 0-4 on this 13-game road trip. Daniels has stolen 8 out of 12, although with Davis' power, you wonder if they would risk having him go. He better make it if he does go, I'll tell you that. 1-2 and two, the count to Eric Davis. And that's that. No runs, one hit, a walk, and one left. And at the end of half an inning, Reds nothing, Dodgers coming up. Scoreless in the bottom of the first, the Reds with a walk and a double and having Sabo picked off. And here are the Dodgers. Sachs, Davis, and Gibson. Guerrero at third in the cleanup spot. Marshall, Shelby, and Socia. Anderson, the shortstop. Hershiser, the pitcher, and trying to stop them. Right hand to Ron Robinson. Two wins and four losses, two and six lifetime. You might remember Robinson had a perfect game into the ninth inning against Montreal. And it was broken up by Wallace Johnson's base hit. Whoops, ball one. As you look at the defense, the guys to watch, Davis, of course, we talked about his ability catching those balls that seem to be headed for home runs. Uh, and I tell you, I like Larkin a lot. Robinson, by the way, is not a good fielding pitcher, nor are the Cincinnati starting pitchers as a group. Robinson and his teammates as starters have 10 errors of those 54. You notice that you are a that was not a typo. In other words, you always see the ERA, the earned run average, but when Robinson is pitching, we put up a URA. What that means is, in games where he is pitched, he's allowing almost a run and a half unearned because of errors either he's committed or the teammates back of him. Now, that's a new one, but it does make a point about the Reds. It does, and I think with the money they get, we ought to put IRAs up there, That's too. next. <laughs> That's next. <laughs> and only Marty Keogh's not playing anymore. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, well. 
The Reds, by the way, in games that Robinson has pitched, and we want to talk about suing for non-support. Can you believe in the games he has pitched, the Reds have made 18 errors? 18. The Big Red will be pitching to Mike Davis, followed by Kirk Gibson. Davis struggling with the bat, and it's remarkable because he had 22 home runs last year. He had 24 home runs a couple of years ago. And here he is with over 160 at bats and no home run. That comes as a big shock to the people who scouted him and signed him for a million bucks. And a bigger shock to Mike Davis because all you can do is visualize what you think is your perfect swing, but until you do it. He hits one into left field and that will land for a base hit. Daniels over to backhand it. And Davis hoping with a nudge to left. The Dodgers with a little two-game winning streak, and the Reds with a tough six-game losing streak. And the batter now, Kirk Gibson. Just as Mike Davis has been a disappointment coming over from the American League, Gibson has had a wonderful start in the National League. Hitting 291, nine home runs, 28 RBIs. He's stolen 12 out of 14. One of the biggest differences he is now hitting according to the ballpark. When he was at Tiger Stadium, it's like 440 to center field. He was trying to pull the ball to right all the time. The Dodgers have him thinking alley. They have him thinking left center and right center. His home run against Dwight Gooden at Chase Stadium the other night was over the center field fence. There goes Davis. The pitch is a strike to throw. They got him. Larkin had it in plenty of time. It was only a question of whether he held on to the ball or not. So Davis, first time he's been caught, nice throw by Bo Diaz. Robinson gave him a little bit of help, and that's all Diaz needed. I mean, he, he makes a good play. Got something on it, and good ball to handle. Look I'm at surprised Gibson, a veteran player, did not do what he should have done. Did you see what he was doing? He was going to try and make believe to bunt, but he didn't bother the catcher at all because he made believe it was a drag bunt, and he was running out of the way. If he just holds the bat over like a sacrifice, then you would give the catcher a bad time. So it wasn't a heads-up play. No, it wasn't. He could have helped him a little bit by just putting that bat like the sacrifice one about eye level. Right. And I tell you, you, as a catcher, you try to look under or over it, and if nothing else, there is a little bit of uh, difficulty in, in seeing it. Base hit into right field. However, it comes with two out. As Gibby singles to right, and the batter is Pete Guerrero. Guerrero's been bothered lately with Gibson at first and two out. He's had a bad neck, and his back is also bothering him. He couldn't bend over last night for a routine ground ball and was charged with an error. He did have three hits, however. So here is Guerrero against Robinson. Gibson a threat to go. Has stolen 12 out of 14. Two out, first inning, no score. He wants to go, I'll tell you. The Dodger attack, I tell you, last night they had 22 singles in eight innings and they got two more singles here. They don't really gun you with the cannon. It's a little BB gun shot. It's like being eaten to death by a moth, but it's getting the job done. Right. Guerrero has only three home runs. When the Dodgers had the 22 singles last night, they were one shy of tying a National League record for most singles in a game and two shy of the American League record since 1900. That's a great shot, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Oh. And that's hit to right center field. Davis coming in a hurry. He's there to pick it off. So two hits and nothing else, and you can tell us why in a little while. Two minutes, I'll okay. And at the end of an inning, no score. Second inning, no score in the ball game. Paul O'Neill, Nick Asoski, and Bo Diaz coming up. By the way, when you see that shot, we should point out that it is not the case of a great deal of interest in Kirk Gibson and Cal Daniels and apathy as far as Davis and O'Neill are concerned in right field. What they do here when they do not have a sellout crowd and they do not have enough people to spread out in two pavilions, they close one of them. And there's a strike to Paul O'Neill. Basketball very much on the minds of many here in Los Angeles, so not the average crowd, although it's still a fine turnout. The Dodgers are averaging better than 37,000 a game, and we have a nice crowd today. The 
were talking about a possible 40,000. I don't know if they made that. Base hit in the right field, so it's open season on the pitchers. Although no score in the second inning. Now you were talking about an interesting shot, right? Well, I mean, I was paying attention. I know you were. You always do, yeah. Ben, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> Why I say it was an interesting shot is you can really have a point of reference when the runner takes the lead. When Gibson was on, the first time you could see just part of the tee in bat, and the second time you could see it all. Now watch. He's got a way bigger lead than Gibson had, your point of reference being the lettering of bat. Now just mark it there the next time, see if he gets a bigger or shorter lead. Sasaki at the plate playing on a bad ankle. His right ankle is heavily taped, and he also has a little plastic protective shield on that ankle. Red badge of courage might very well have been invented in Cincinnati this year. Bigger lead. Oh, and one. Comebacker and a Hershiser unable to handle it. And it's a base hit up the middle, and Oral is furious at himself. He flinched. And it went by him instead of a double play. You have runners at first and second and nobody out. The ball comes right back. He looked like he was in pretty good position, but he is a bit off balance and kind of snaps at it and misses it. And it really costs him because instead of the double play, he's got first and second. Now, it would be an easy thing to say it's a ball he should have handled. But keep in mind, it's 60 feet, 6 inches from the mound to home play. But when you finish, you're about 55 feet. And that ball always seems to... Uh, it appears to come back much, much faster th than it really does, and uh, sometimes you end up making two grabs. And by the way, for the people in Cincinnati, it brings to mind, they were watching the game locally last night, and they saw John Franco struck on the kneecap on a comebacker. We're happy to say that the x-rays were negative. John is to be examined by an orthopedist this afternoon. And we are hoping that John Franco will be okay and able to return. The Reds still have two players on the 15-day disabled list, Leon Durham and Tracy Jones. And since Franco is questionable, along with Rob Murphy, who has a tender arm, the Reds had to make a personnel move. They did, and that was the reason we couldn't interview uh, Pete Rose. Uh, Pat Pasillo was sent down. Williams was here, just reported. And uh, it's always tough to tell that young player he's going out to the big leagues. And now, on one to count. Ball missed one ball and one strike. There is John Franco, and as you can see, that right knee and leg encased. He has crutches, but he still felt that he wanted to put on a uniform. And so John Franco, who will be examined today, and we can only hope he's okay. Interesting, you want to talk about life's irony? Okay. John Franco at one time was in the Dodger organization. One and two. And one of his closest friends. A roommate, teammate, and buddy was Dave Anderson, the guy who hit the line drive and almost huh. wrecked his career last night. I liked the story last night, too, about uh, Marischal's number. Oh, yeah, we have to get Jose Rio into yeah. the game. Yeah, but that, that you was, think I made it up? Well, but it was better your version, yeah, I, whether it's true or not. It was almost like a Paul Harvey, and now you know the rest of the story. If Jose Rio comes into the ballgame, and the count is 2-2 two and two on Diaz, Rio... His father-in-law is Hall of Famer Juan Marichal. And Rio was wearing number 27 on his uniform number. And that, of course, was Marichal's number when he was with San Francisco. We don't know if he asked for it, but it sure makes a better story by saying he did. I like your story. I like that version. I don't think the movie's going to be better. I don't want to let a fact get in the way. That's right. <laughs> two and two, the Cal de Bo Diaz. Scoreless in the second, but the Reds run as at first and second. Three and two. And now Hershiser is asking for it. Diaz, as a catcher, not a great runner by any means, is grounded into five double plays. And let's see if they turn the runners loose to try and avoid. The big thing is he's been striking, striking out, out. And not walking. That's the thing you have to worry about is he strikes out, you got a double play. If it's a ground ball, you got a double play. What do you do? I say run him. I would too. Three and two. The runners go. And there's a little dribbler back to Hershiser, so because they were going, no chance at the double play. And you have runners at second and third, and one out. That might be the first time we've agreed in a long time. No, 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 well, don't, I mean, don't say that. It's incredible where we both felt That's it. right. I mean, it was, it was just was, right? <laughs> and is. And Jeff Treadway's at the plate. Treadway 
fine young ball player hitting 279 but at least at this stage of his development Davy Concepcion plays against left handers and the question is how does Hershiser feel about putting Treadway on and then going after Robinson the pitcher with one out sometimes with a pitcher like Hershiser you might let him make the decision that may be part of it. I wonder if he may have twisted something too, Vin, because Peronowski, I don't think that like a strategy meeting, but I mean, to me, it kind of shaped it to Hershiser's end. Uh, it would have to be a freaky kind of thing because I tell you, he looks like the kind of a guy who really takes care of himself. Well, Peronowski going out to the mound has been satisfied, and they are going to walk Treadway. Hmm. Treadway has been a very successful hitter, especially with men in scoring positions. So the Dodgers take the bat right out of his hands. Young Jeff is hitting 360 with men in scoring position. So he deserves a great deal of respect. So in a moment, the Reds will have the bases loaded, one out, and Barry Larkin on deck as Ron Robinson comes to the plate. Robinson, as a hitter, has just three hits and no RBIs, and he has struck out a third of the time. Let me ask you something. Okay. I've always thought about this. The bases are loaded and one out. Here's Robinson. The worst thing he can do is hit into a double play. Right. You got a very good hitter, Larkin, on deck. Right. Would you just send him up and say, I don't want you to swing at one pitch. I want you to just stand up there and watch everything. It's happened. Yeah. They've asked him. I tell you, him striking out would be addition by subtraction. I mean, mm -hmm. he would help the rally because if he hits a ground ball, it's all over. I would almost tempted to put on a safety squeeze I'd send him up without a bat <laughs> high chopper up along first to Hershiser they're gonna get the run and everybody moves up 90 feet as Ron Robinson gets an RBI his first of the year as he grounds out to Hershiser Treadway to second as Soski to third and Paul O'Neill coming in do you think if you would have sent him up without a bat that he would have filed a grievance? <laughs> Probably. I would have heard about it. <laughs> I know that. So, one to nothing Cincinnati with their six game losing streak and all the impressive numbers about Hershiser at Dodger Stadium and in the daytime. And now Barry Larkin. Larkin grounded a short in the first inning. Tell you what helped on that play was that nice hard ground in front of home plate. That ball hit and went straight up, and there was nothing Hershiser could do but wait for it. Shades out of Maury Will. Yes, sir. He killed every worm in Southern California around home plate. And when he hit one of those, it was a single turn right into a triple in a hurry. And the bunt up along third foul, and the count on one. Barry Larkin. The Reds have been alone in fourth place for about two weeks now. In fact, the only time the Reds were in first place when they won the first two games of the year. Their longest winning streak, a very modest three, when they beat Pittsburgh twice and Atlanta once. You know, Vin, you would expect a lot more of that with Guerrero's bad back testing him out because last night he just could not reach down. I don't know if the Reds are aware that he has the bad back or not, but he sure is vulnerable, especially now. The best play he makes at third base is on the slow hit ball up along third. He pulled him in a couple steps that punt did, I'll tell you that. That's where the advanced scout comes in. He's the guy who not only talks about how to pitch guys, he knows who's hurt, who's not hurt, and who's playing hurt. When you watch Guerrero, if he raises his left arm or his shoulder, that's where the, the problem is, the left side of his neck. 0-1 oh, to count. There's a one-hopper at Sachs, and that should be the third out. So Hershiser gives up one run, two hits and a walk, and two left. And at the end of an inning and a half, the Reds won, the Dodgers nothing. Bottom of the second inning, the Reds leading the Dodgers one to nothing. Mike Marshall, John Shelby, and Mike Sosia coming up in that order. Tomorrow, the concluding game of the series between these two teams, Tim Leary and Mario Soto. Marshall had been struggling. He had two hits and 39 at bats, and then he came up with three hits last night. Their first sign that he might have shaken the shackles. Line drive right at Sabo. One down. 
John Shelby will be the batter. Take another look at that rip. I think Robinson he didn't want it where he put it because it's right down the middle, a little breaking ball. And Marshall, all you can do is hit it hard. It's right at Sable. I gotta like Sable. Anybody, he's got a flat top haircut, but he was getting a haircut and he didn't like what the barber was doing, got out of the chair in the middle of the haircut and walked right out without paying and went to another barber. Love that kind of move. <laughs> Chris Sabo, he's got a shot at Rookie of the Year on it. He's been playing very well. There are a couple of excellent rookies in the National League. Mark Grace of the Chicago Cubs. Kevin Elster of the New York Mets. Roberto Alomar. Luis Alisea of the Cardinals. Alomar of San Diego. And, of course, Jeff Treadway of the Reds. John Shelby certainly has his stroke back as a left-handed hitter. Rolls one up the middle. Great stop by Treadway who feeds Larkin. Throw not in time. Great effort. Oh, you love that because uh, the ordinary ball player, once he makes the diving stop, is content to say, well, I stopped it from going to the outfield for whatever that's worth with nobody on third. But he wasn't satisfied. He saw Larkin there, and he flipped it to him much like a double play. And even though they didn't get him, it was a heads-up play. And a big hit for Shelby, who has now hit in 19 consecutive games. Great to see. Yes, it is. It's funny how you see a play like that, and your memory just goes racing back to a game at Yankee Stadium. Lou Boudreau, the shortstop. Kenny Keltner, the third baseman. Billy Johnson of the Yankees hits one in the hole. Boudreaux backhands, flips it to Keltner, who throws Johnson out at first. It's beautiful to see because you not only have to anticipate that play, you have to be agile enough to make it. And it's a little easier for a second baseman and a shortstop because they're accustomed to feeding the ball to each other on double plays, so why not practice it? But for a shortstop to feed the third base, that was yeah, something. Yeah. Of course, Boudreaux was full of those plays anyway. But here's that angle. Lead. Like. There it is. Oh, he's got the biggest lead of all. He's by the T and at. Look at that. Sosia, very tough to strike out. So if the Dodgers have a hit and run play on, this is an ideal situation. Sosia, contact hitter, and Shelby, a good runner. And he acts it out. He gives that coach a lot of time to give all the signs and then does something like grabbing the top half of the bat, which usually is, it could be a sign for the base runner or something's on. One ball and no strike. Sosia lifting one into shallow left. Daniels coming in. So two down, and the batter will be Dave Anderson. One nothing in favor of the Reds in the bottom of the second inning. And once again, we remind our viewers, we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. Anderson has been a key to the Dodgers' success. Dwight Gooden hit Alfredo Griffin. Griffin suffering a broken hand and will be out for a month. And Anderson has played exceptionally well, committing one error and hitting a very solid 280. He's one of those guys that you could put uh, play on just to break up the infield. Two outs, you know, you, you just want to help him as much as you can. They thought that. They pitched out. John Shelby, a threat to run. He's stolen five out of six. The hit and run play is a defensive play to stay away from the double play, but some hitters, it helps to break up that infield. Anderson would be that type. On deck, Hershiser, and he's not a bad hitter. Very late. He might have been trying to go to right field. One ball and one strike to Dave Anderson. He'll have a look at Joel Malfitano, as will John Shelby. Well, then you mentioned that uh, Gooden and Griffin thing. That really started the war, didn't it? Yeah, you talk about a situation escalating. That's exactly what's happened between the Dodgers and the Mets. One and one. And again, I have to believe it's not that he's so late, it's that he's just trying to go the other way. One and two. He's got that big gap between first and second, and he's trying to pick up the percentage. He needs help. And he tries to utilize the gap, and as I said before, maybe they'll start to run it now, of course, with two strikes. Do you even worry about uh, hitting and running or anything like that? Two outs. Shelby's a threat. And he fouls it away. Back into the seats out of play. Count stays. One ball and two strikes. 
One to nothing in favor of the Reds. If you joined us a little late in the second inning, singles by O'Neill and Asoski. They moved up a notch on a ball hit back to the box. Treadway was walked intentionally, and O'Neill scored as Robinson was tagged out on a roller up along the first baseline, fielded by Hershiser. One and two. Hit up the middle for a base hit. Four Dodger hits. Shelby will not run on Eric Davis, nor would he even think about running on him. And if nothing else, by getting a base hit out of that number eight hitter, you get your pitcher up there with two outs, so in a sense you get him out of the way. Hershiser is pretty much of a contact hitter, and that makes him a dangerous hitting pitcher. He's only struck out three times. That's maybe, oh, 12% of the time. This year, he has two RBIs with just one hit. He's a very good bunter, and Sabo is playing him deep at third. Now they bring Sabo up. Yeah, you have to have him at least even with the bag at third. Hershiser, a former hockey player. Big breaking ball strike. That's a great equalizer right there. I'll tell you, Shelby will have some trouble scoring on a base hit as we look at the 29-29, uh, end of the first quarter. They're playing very shallow, and Shelby will try to score with two outs on a base hit. Another breaking ball, 0-2. I wouldn't even throw around. I'd throw him another one. No balls and two strikes to count. Shelby at second, though he's hit in 19 straight. Anderson at first with two out. And a busted bat, a little roll at a short cut play for Larkin. No play for Larkin. And the bases are loaded. That's a tough break for Robinson because he threw a good curveball. It was out of the strike zone, and Hershey's is just trying to protect the plate. You can see Robinson, there's nothing he can do about it. He made a good pitch. Hershey's is trying to protect the plate. Literally throws the bat at the ball and ends up with an infield hit. To tell you what's going on against Cincinnati, and it's, of course, very early in the game. Look at his pitch out of the zone, and he throws the bat, and it's... There's nothing that the shortstop Larkin could do but maybe make a play at third base, but Shelby stops right there, I tell you. That means 27 hits for the Dodgers in a little more than nine innings. They're almost averaging three hits an inning against Cincinnati. And they have three hits in this inning, two out, nothing in, and sacks at the plate. And even this inning, uh, Treadway makes the play on Shelby. And he, he tries to get him with the flip to Larkin. Anderson's ball up the middle, bouncing ball. Hershiser throws the bat and gets it. Three base hits. And I mean, you know, it's not really a loud rally, but certainly a rally. Well, the key is that Robinson has not struck out a hitter. And he is not throwing the ball by very many hitters. In other words, when they swing, they make contact. You keep making contact, wonderful things can happen. And in this ballpark, the ground ball, you keep it on the ground, you've got a chance. So Robinson, after Marshall, lined to third. has given up singles to Shelby, Anderson, and Hershiser, And with two out, trying to get out of the inning against Sachs. Pass ball at the knee, one and one. Sachs, one of the hotter Dodger hitters, too. In fact, hitting over 370 in about his last 25 games. So they have the right man at the right spot. One and one to Steve Sachs. Off speed breaking ball up, ball two. That was a mistake right there that Sachs just let it get away. It was out in the strike zone, but that's one of those nice. Christmas Eve curveballs that you wish Santa Claus would drop off at your house. That had to look like a basketball. Two and one to Steve. Shelby Anderson and Hershey's are on the bases, and he's jammed. Fouls it away. Two and two. One nothing red. Second inning. Deuce is wild on sacks with the bases loaded.
One run, three hits for Cincinnati. No runs, five hits for the Dodgers. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Chicago at New York in a rain delay back there. So we'll share some of the sunshine of Southern California with you for the moment. There's ball three, three and two. It's one nothing Cincinnati, bottom of the second inning. The Dodgers have loaded the bases on three hits with two outs. And we have a full count of sacks, so you have come at the exactly right moment. And Robinson is missed as we look at the score of that Red Cup game. Rain delayed, top of the fourth, one nothing. The Mets out in front. Robinson has not been able to throw a good curveball to sack, so is he going to challenge him right here? Let's see. Three and two. Runners go. Fastball. Line to left. Base hit in front of Daniel. In comes Shelby. In comes Anderson. Two to one, Dodgers. Hershiser stops at second. The fourth hit of the inning. Robinson did not have a good curveball against Sachs, and he had to throw the strike, and a line drive base hit. It's the hardest hit ball of this inning, and the Dodgers take the lead. The Dodgers now have had 28 singles in nine and two-third innings starting last night. 28 singles. And here now is Mike Davis, who's single to left in the first inning. Nicky Hatcher gets five hits last night. Can't Doesn't start play. today. Ball one to Mike Davis. The Dodgers trying to stay in first place. They've been in first place for 41 days, and they begin the day a game and a half in front of the Astros. Ground ball to the right side. That's to Treadway, who kicks it, recovers, and gets him. And he fielded that with the aplomb of a veteran. He was not hurried or ragged. He knew he had his man. At the end of two, the Dodgers two and the Reds one. We'll be right back. Steve Sachs and Mickey Hatcher had 10 hits between them. The Dodgers had 22 singles. They have a half a dozen more today. It's really rather remarkable. It gets contagious. I mean, uh, it seems like if you threw up the rosin bag, somebody hit, would hit it. It's almost like working with a sprinkler system. You spring a leak here, you fix it, and here's one here and one there. You don't know what to do. And the key, just as last night, the ball just seems to find a place to drop. The key hit was Earl Hershiser with the bat disintegrating, getting a little dribble at a shortstop. And that was the best curveball that Robinson threw that inning out of the strike zone. He gets a base hit out of it. Well, we'll see if the Reds can recover. They're down 2-1, to one, and, of course, they're trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Big breaking ball away to Sabo. Sabo doubled inside third and down the line in the first inning, but was then picked off second base. And that's the way things have been going for Pete Rose's crew. They've not had the same lineup for over two weeks. They're constantly trying to find the proper solution. They've had four different cleanup hitters since Leon Durham's been out. And Sabo now is two for two as he bangs one into left and represents the tying run at first. So you got to like him. Wears those prescription goggles, much like Jabbar wears, and he's just a good-looking, aggressive player. First time we saw him in spring training, you looked and you thought, now there's a kid who's going to make the ball club. He has everything you want, and a lot of heart. It's very obvious. Cal Daniels followed by Eric Davis. Now we'll see. If they can generate anything, as we mentioned earlier, Daniels and Davis are really killing the Reds because they're not making contact enough. 88 strikeouts between them. Daniels has had a terrible time on the road. He had his only home run of the road last night, and he's hitting in the 220s. Same ball. Got picked off, but has not cut down his lead. And you saw Sosha looking at that Dodger bench, see if they can get a pitch out maybe from somebody. And there you can measure uh, Sabo's lead. Daniels at the plate with six home runs, 25. Runs batted in. Dodgers two, Reds one. Top of the third inning. Cut down his lead, though. The 
the second meeting of the year between the two clubs so the scheduling it took the third of June before they saw each other beginning of a long stretch now within the division for a while there were 30 some odd games played between the East and the West now each division will stay within itself so the Dodgers a game and a half in front play Cincinnati now and then a four game series with the Astros. Chopper down to Sachs. He looks at second gets the force play and that's all boy Sabo went in there hard as he had every right to do to make sure there was no chance of turning one. He had to really stop because the ball might hit him now. He follows it all the way. He gets off, but he sees that ball coming. Now he's got to wait for it, lets it get by. And now he knows his job is to take the shortstop out of the play, which he does and keeps going. So Eric Davis coming up with one out, Cal Daniels at first. And the Dodgers leading two to one. Davis a remarkable talent who is suddenly struggling and a strike one reason he's not doing anything in the daylight it's hard to believe with all of his abilities he's only hitting one hundred and eighty in day games and there's eighteen of them he has just one home run in the daylight one ball and one strike to count to Eric Davis well, he sure holds that bat loose. I, mean, I, I can't think of another hitter that does what he does up there. It's almost like it's a, it's a very light piece of balsa wood in his hands. Well, you have to be quick oh. to be able to wiggle and waggle your bat in the big leagues against a big league fastball in the 90s. And yet, he's as cool as he can be up there. Almost like he's not ready, but you get a lot of activity when that ball gets in the strike zone. Look at that bat. <laughs> one and two. I say one thing with all the wiggling and all the talk of his abilities, he's hitting 230 and 180 in the daytime. He kind of pumps that bat. And of course, if you're not hitting, it's a hitch. If you're hitting, it's a trigger mechanism. One and two to Eric Davis. You good folks have been watching the Cubs and the Mets the rain delaying it but that's it when it stops in New York we'll go back and pick up the action there at Shea two and two the count Eric Davis Cal Daniels at first one out in the third Dodgers two Reds one Daniels has stolen eight out of twelve if they decide to turn him loose. Lee May coaching at first Bruce Kim over at third. He was the guy that had an active bat Lee May. Remember oh, how he used to wiggle that bat before he went into action. Two balls and two strikes to count Eric Davis. Sosha. One away in the third. So she keeps checking that bench. Well if you're going to run him three and two run him two and two some people say he's not going and he was jammed and pops it up. I don't know maybe all that wiggling that bat is really hurting him. He's a little embarrassed. To wonder Shelby didn't run him off the play because he was coming oh, towards it. But I guess Anderson thought he had it easily all the way and just kept going. And all of a sudden he found himself seated. I tell you the problem here. You rarely think about wind as a factor. And there is a light breeze blowing out to center field. And that actually contributed to it. A little Bo Jangles back step. Although Bo never wound up like that. Never really ran back hard. He just kept backpedaling, backpedaling, and all of a sudden, hey, look at here. I have to do this to catch it. And the flags tell us in center and the palm trees. That's a Southern California shot. See, no in other question. ballparks, you show flags. Out here, you show palm trees. Laid back. Way to go, Bucky. Hey, wait a minute. What Fouled a, away. What about our, our Cracker Jack producer, Kenny Edmondson? Now, come on. Way to go, Kenny and Bucky. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh and one to Paul O'Neill. With two down, Cal Daniels at first, two to one Dodgers in the third. This is a beautiful setting, though, man. Yeah, it is. Two runs, six hits for the Dodgers, all singles. One run, four hits for the Reds. 
They have a double. Last night, the Reds had a double and a home run, and the Dodgers had 22 singles. Good backdrop. One to Paul O'Neill. Ground foul. On two. Sacks at second base is uh, certainly showing O'Neill a lot of respect because he's about on the grass at second base, expecting the pull, and he's playing him deep. He's just walked back to that foul ball, but he plays right at the edge, right about there. Paul O'Neill and Tracy Jones were alternating in the outfield. Of course, Tracy Jones tripped over the mound in the bullpen going after a ball in Cincinnati and he's on the disabled list with a bad knee. Ball one. Of course that's one of our pet peeves right. in the new ballparks in those parks where they build a new park and they have the bullpens in a spot where they can influence and get in the way and that's exactly what happened in Cincinnati. One and two to O'Neill. Nick Asoski on deck. Off third, out of play. No chance for Guerrero. So it's still one and two to Paul O'Neill. O'Neill, an Ohioan, born in Columbus. Twenty-five years old. He's really big. He looks lean. He's over two hundred pounds. One reason he's six four, so it's really spread out. One and two to O'Neill. Daniels at first. Two out in the third. Two talking, to one dot. Talking about spread out. That Jack McKean in that Padre uniform is spread out. <laughs> one taco to go. There goes Daniels. The pitch is low. The throw is in time to get it. He had a tough ball to handle, too. Breaking ball. Two six of you scoring. Mike Socia to Dave Anderson. And at the end of two and a half, two to one Dodgers. Interestingly enough, he's wearing a glove already to bat. He's a fifth hitter, but we're going to talk about his throw. He backhands it nicely, a short hop almost. But he really put something on his throw, and Anderson just has to drop that ball to make the tag. That's a good throw. So we go to the bottom of the third, two to one Dodgers. Kirk Gibson followed by Pedro Guerrero and then Mike Marshall. Way out in front of a chain. Gibson has been so impressive with the Dodgers and it's kind of surprising when you realize the only category Kirk has ever led the league in would be errors. He did that twice over in the American League. But along with Carney Lansford you might be looking at one of the two best players not to ever appear in an all star game. He has so much ability. One and one. You know Ben the uh, Davy Collins of the Reds was quoted as saying that the Reds need an attitude adjustment and that when you talk about Kirk Gibson they talk about the new attitude he brought to the Dodgers. He really did what he in, in a nutshell what he did. He brought a football intensity to a baseball clubhouse. You know if you've ever been in a in a baseball clubhouse because it's such a long year the radios are blaring and there's all kinds of conversation and laughter. You have to do it day after day after day. A football locker room is deathly silent before the Sunday game in the NFL. Oh bad swing. He was really cheated and down he goes. One time I was in the clubhouse of the NFL before a game and I was doing football absolutely silent. And I was talking to the coach who shall be nameless and suddenly you heard a player chuckle not really laugh chuckle in the trainer's room where he's being taped and the coach said to me you know what I'd like to do and I said what he said you see those neon lights overhead I said yeah he said I'd like to take this chair and smash every one of them and I said why, why? he said there should be no laughter in this public and that that's a football locker room in my experience in the NFL before a game. Before the game. Yeah, before. No game. Yeah, before. Because they all sit, they tape, they sit in front of the locker room, they're deep in thought. And they are gladiators going out and maybe wreck themselves. But a baseball clubhouse, a madhouse. But Gibson brought that intensity into the Dodger clubhouse. Hmm. Oh, and one to Pedro Guerrero. Good spinner. That's as good a curveball as he thrown. I, I would never step on that story. You no, know it's that. true. Yeah. Well, I know, but that reminds me of our production meetings a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two to count there, Pedro Guerrero. 
One out, third inning, two to one Dodgers. Robinson throwing one breaking ball after another. When we were kids, we used to take a tennis ball and cut it in half and then turn that half inside out and try and scale it to make a big break. In a sense, that's the way Robinson's curveball is acting. Oh, look what Toronto is doing oh. to the Red Sox. In fact, it's done. 10 2, stick a fork in. Still 1 and 2. You think that that, that football intensity could sustain over a baseball Oh, no. Season? No way. No. Oh, no. But it is, it's really something. If you've been in, a, in an NFL locker room before a game, it is sepulchral. Yeah, I imagine it would be. Yeah. Uh, but only on Sunday. <laughs> one and two, the count, uh, Pedro Guerrero. Little John Miller gets that one, Ben. <laughs> Just showed him a fastball, and the count two and two, be my guess. <laughs> two runs, six singles for the Dodgers. One run, four hits for the Reds. We're in the third. On deck, Mike Marshall. Robinson trying to win his third. Now he's missing with fastball, so he's struggling three and two. And remember, he was nibbling with sacks with breaking balls, went three and two, had to come in with a fastball with the bases loaded. Two RBIs. Look at Pete. Breaking ball got him. So he wasn't going to give him a three and two fastball this time, and he rings him up. You know, it looked almost like Guerrero was a bit upset because the ball came inside. And you pretty much have to pitch him inside. Boy, you can't now. give him the inside part of that plate. I mean, you do that, and uh, you're just asking for trouble. And that, there's the breaking ball that punched him out. And the batter will be Mike Marshall. Two to one, Dodgers third inning. And Pete angry at himself. Breaking ball. And all of a sudden, Robinson's is really it. coming yeah. now. With sacks, he didn't have it at all. Ron Robinson, who came so close to a no-hitter and, for that matter, almost a perfect game in Montreal. 0-1. Foul back, 0-2. In his career, Robinson has been a much better road pitcher. He's under 500 at Riverfront. And at the start of this year, on the road, 15-5. He has also been a pitcher who is usually successful before the break, the All-Star break, and then struggles after it. But this year, he's hurting early. Two wins, four losses. Big Red, he's 6'4 and 230. Boy, you're almost guaranteed to see a curveball here. You can't guess with two strikes, but you just wonder. Fastball hit up the middle, but it hit the mound. Backhanded by Treadway, who throws him out. Oh, what a play. So Marshall. Loses a base hit. The Dodgers out in order at the end of three. It's two to one Dodgers. Now here's a look back at a very special Olympic moment. We're going to the fourth inning here at Dodgers Stadium. The Dodgers two runs, six hits, no errors. The Reds one run, four hits, and no errors. For Joe Garagiola, I'm Vin Scully, wishing you a very pleasant good day. And we are hoping, if we can, to ship some of this Southern California sunshine back to New York. And when they get the tarps off and the Cubs and the Mets are properly loosened up, they will pick up where they left off. Meanwhile, it will be Paul O'Neill, Nick Asoski, and Bo Diaz trying to test Oral Hershiser in the fourth inning. Tomorrow, these two clubs will be after each other again with Tim Leary and Mario Soto. Has he been a pleasant surprise for the Dodgers at Leary? Tim Leary since spring training I've always had the feeling that he could become the next Mike Scott in the sense that Mike Scott won five games and then the next year was an 18 game winner and became the Cy Young Award National League Pitcher of the Year etc and Leary won three games last year and he's pitched well enough this year where you say he has become a wonderful pitcher you know what Ron Darling said in New York although Darling and Leary were roommates mm -hmm. Darling said that Leary had the best stuff in the league. Better than Scott, better than Gooden. Hmm. Ball one to Paul O'Neill. So we'll keep an eye on Tim Leary this year. One and oh. Pop foul off third. Guerrero hustling over to the Dodger dugout. He will not have a play. That's on the roof and kangaroos way back into the sands. And the count one ball and one strike. In the big ball, 
They are still bouncing and bouncing and will continue to bounce. The Lakers leading by one at, at the half. Nearby, over in Inglewood at the Forum. One and one, the count to Paul O'Neill. It's two to one Dodgers, top of the fourth. Off speed, foul back. One and two. Oral Hershiser trying to win his eighth. He has reached that stature now, without a doubt. He is the best pitcher on the Dodgers staff and one of the top pitchers in the National League. Although he's been a break-even pitcher for the last two years, the only pitcher in the majors to finish at 500 two years in a row. Well, I tell you, as a baseball fan, Ben, and we all are, it was sad to see Fernando being taken out so early last night. Fernando is still looking for a win at home, all three victories on the road. And there's one interesting thing about Fernando. His father is seriously ill, and his father is here in Los Angeles. And some people are wondering if when he's on the road and he just concentrates on basket, on uh, pitching his baseball game, he's one pitcher. And when he's home agonizing over his dad, it affects his performance this year at Dodger Stadium. It's at least worth your consideration. Two and two. Three and two to count. O'Neill, Asoski, and Diaz. Two to one Dodgers, fourth inning. Line drive to left field, base hit. Gibson over to get it and comes up with it. O'Neill makes a turn. So three consecutive innings, the leadoff man has gotten aboard. O'Neill in the second inning and he scored. Sabo in the third and he didn't. And now O'Neill opens up with a base hit in the fourth inning. That base hit was really the sign of a good hitter because they were playing him to pull, and he is a pull hitter, but Hershiser laid that sinker outside part to play it, and O'Neill just went with it, and he drove that ball. It wasn't a late swing. He meant to go to the opposite field, and he hit it hard. The Dodgers are hoping that Hershiser will repeat his performance last year. In June, he was magnificent last year. He had an earned run average of less than one. In fact, in the month of June, he had five wins and one loss last year. You know, we were talking before about Fernando's performance at Dodger Stadium and on the road, and then we'll conclude it. But you might want to really have it substantiated with some numbers. Fernando, on the road, three wins, one loss, an earned run average of less than two. At home, where I really feel he's agonizing, he is 0 and 4, and his earned run average is over 8. Ocho. Mm. It could be. One ball and one strike. One and two. I've always marveled about a major league player who can have some kind of terrible problem, family troubles, a pending divorce, or whatever. And yet they can leave it behind them and, and play baseball for a couple of hours. Pete Rose was the best. Classic example. And Steve Garvey was another, another one. Another one with a terrible magazine story oh. and everybody talking. And he would come to the ballpark and he would play his game. And how he did it, I'll never know. One and two. I have trouble sleeping trying to select a blue tie. <laughs> one out and Bo Diaz coming up. For Oral Hershiser, his second strikeout. And the batter, Diaz, and we'll see if they put a play on, but again, you get to that problem with Diaz. He strikes out a lot. You'd like to avoid a double play and maybe have O'Neill on the go. But Bo's numbers, he strikes out almost six times as much as he walks. He never walks. There's enough activity at first base. O'Neill was checking with his first base coach. Diaz gave the coach a real good look. It's a matter of when is he going to start the runner because you've got to feel he's going to start him. That's hit to right center. Shelby on the move along with Davis, and Mike Davis makes the play. And back to first comes O'Neill. So Diaz took a shot to right field, and it's a long out to Mike Davis, who, by the way, 
is playing very well. He's the only Dodger to play 30 or more games this year without an error. And that's a little bit of a surprise because they said he was a bad defensive outfielder in the American League. And he caught that ball at his waist. And he could have still gone maybe. Watch how he catches this ball. I mean, he didn't, you know. Willie Mays almost. Yeah, like he was right there. And he could have gone another 10, 15 feet. So I guess in a sense his fielding prowess is as much as a surprise as the disappointment of the lack of the home run. And with two out, Jeff Treadway is the batter. O'Neill is not sure. He is asking Bruce Kim to go over the signs again in the third base coaching box, and then he finally flashed okay, so we'll see. Treadway hitting 279. And hit by the mound behind second to sack. Shovels to Anderson for the force play on O'Neill. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of three and a half, two to one, Dodgers. We move to the bottom of the fourth. Dodgers two runs, six hits. Reds one run, five hits. John Shelby, Mike Socia, and then Dave Anderson against Ron Robinson. Robinson retired the side in order in the third inning. And for the first time today, was throwing a very good breaking ball. So let's see if it holds up for him or not. Fastball for a strike on one. I guess if you're a switch hitter and you're out on the DL, it's twice as difficult to come back. And Shelby has gotten his left hand stroke down, but not the right hand. He's hitting close to 350 from this side of the plate, barely 200 the other side. Just one of the problems of being a switch hitter. <laughs> That's right. That's why I never switched him. <laughs> oh, and two to John. He was hurt checking his swing. And he hurt the muscles in the just above the abdomen on the left side. Can I make a confession to yeah. you? Yeah. guy said to me the other day, he said, did you have a DL when you played? One and two to count. Two and two. I never heard I can't, of the I DL. said, no, there was never a disabled list that I could remember. No. no, I mean, it's almost, when did that come in? Two balls, two strikes. A little roller in the hole over to plug it up his treadway. Got him. Close play, though. One away. Now, 1950, when I got hurt, and I was out from June until September, I was on some kind of list. Mm -hmm. In fact, right now, I'm on, would you believe, the Cubs' voluntary retired list? You are? Right now, the Cubs own me. If they want me to play, I could not play for another team. Okay. This game is being seen in the clubhouse at Shea Stadium, especially in the Cubs' club. If they need you, you are still there. I'm still there. As Jim Fry and Don Zimmer, if they need me, I'm ready. Threat right. or a promise? Do I hear a phone ring? One ball and no strikes to Mike Sosha, who applied to left field in the second inning. It's two to one, Dodgers. Kind of a quiet game right now, or in the fourth. Fly ball, slicing foul down the left field line that will go back in amongst the customers. Even the Dodger rallies are quiet. They're consistent, not a single. Ping, tingling, ping, ping. ping. We're not looking at Rembrandts. We're looking at scores. And last night, they piled it on. One ball and one strike to Socia. Tommy Lasorda enjoying the fruits of victory, at least. <laughs> Is he ever? And his just desserts. <laughs> Boy, he got all over me. I didn't get a chance to get over there today. One and one. Good pitch. Off speed. One and two to count. Dave Anderson on deck. Two balls and two strikes to count to Mike Socia. After a very wobbly beginning where he gave up a half a dozen hits, Robinson has now retired five in a row. On the hands, hit down the right field line, foul. He kind of challenged him with a fastball in, and that's the ball that Socia loves to turn on and pull. Two and two. He's been standing the outside part to play it with everything and then came inside and the associate did turn on it in a hurry. Ron Robinson last year had elbow problems, arthroscopic surgery in October to remove a bone fragment from the elbow. He's not the same pitcher as when he first started, but he certainly is a wiser pitcher. Line drive, base hit to right field. 
So it is another single for the Dodgers. Seven singles today, 22 singles last night. And Dave Anderson, the batter. Well, you see this ball club on, well, you do see them practically every day. This is a hit and run combination going right now. Oh, yeah. And Hershiser on deck. Dave Anderson, single to center in the second inning. Two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. One run, five hits for the Reds. We're in the fourth. A little breaking ball wrinkled in for a strike. 0 and 1. The Dodgers trying to win their 30th game. The Mets have already won 35. cleaned up against the West. They won 23 out of 33, and they beat the Dodgers 5 out of 6. Right here, look at Diaz looking. I think if I were catching Ben, I'd pitch out just for the fun of it. All right, Sosa, short lead. Not gone. And the breaking ball fouled away. One and two. He was trying to punch it in the right field as a good hitter. There was no play on. Bo Diaz to read Tommy Lasorda's mind as far as the possible hit and run play. Of course, with two strikes, you don't expect anything. Just inside. Socia, a veteran catcher who's been with the Dodgers since 1980, had his best year stealing bases last year. He stole seven. I don't expect him to run at all. Line foul and on the hands, and he just turned with that one. The curveball just seemed to sit there. The Sosia back to first. One out, fourth inning, two to one Dodgers. The Cubs and the Mets delayed with some rain showers. Hopefully, we'll send some sunshine back there and they can pick up and continue. Two and two to Dave Anderson. up on the right side Treadway with the shades down and Larkin comes over to see if he needs help two down so Oral Hershiser will be the batter and Hershiser had the key base hit in the second inning with two out broke his bat hit a bleeder to shortstop look at Anderson he's hot <laughs> sometimes they end up breaking their bat like that Barry Larkin the red shortstop hurt himself doing that slamming a bat down he hurt his finger but Anderson's all right is that the blood blister when you're talking about we had a blood blister and just jammed the bat down I saw a quote where they asked Pete Rose about it and as soon as Larkin hit the, the wall or whatever he did Pete said he's got a blood blister because you always do that when you break a bat mm -hmm. he doesn't miss a like that. No. one and one the count the Dodgers two runs, seven hits. The Reds one run, five hits. We are trying to bottle the Southern California sunshine and send it back to a somewhat dank and dreary New York, and maybe it has worked. So for you folks who are watching the Cubs and the Mets, we will go from the palm trees to the spires and back to Bob and Tony. <laughs> single in the second inning. Interestingly enough, every Dodger but Guerrero and Marshall has a base hit. The bunt by Hershiser. Robinson has plenty of time and takes care of him. No runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of four, the Dodgers two, the Reds one, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The week is brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, who invites you to come see the full line of cars and trucks. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. We're going to the fifth inning. The Dodgers leading the Reds two to one. You talk about laid back Southern California. That's what we have here right now. I think it's the it's a hot, sultry kind of a day, and the folks are just sitting back saying, show me. So it's pretty quiet. 
Red scored in the top of the second. The Dodgers came back with two and we kind of move into the fifth. Pete Rose doesn't want his ball club to be affected and laid back. He'll have Robinson, Larkin, and Sabo. Danny Heap resting for the moment with his sunflower seeds and the Dodgers leading two to one. I heard a weird story talking about sunflower seeds. Uh-huh, tell me. He said that... Now, I, I heard it, so don't lay it on me, okay? Dave Pallone, the umpire, had the problem with Rose with his second base umpire, and Jim Quick was behind the plate, and Dave Concepcion was eating sunflower seeds, and he was taking the seeds and out of his mouth and his hand and throwing them on the ground. And Jim Quick supposedly said to Concepcion, if you don't stop throwing kisses to Pallone, <laughs> I'm going to throw you out of the game. Seriously? Seriously. And Concepcion said he wasn't, and he, he said, don't come near me. And Concepcion did, and he threw him out of the game for allegedly throwing kisses at Pallone. There's a bound up along first, Socia trying to throw around the big guy and got him. Robinson had to remind himself to get back into that 45-foot lane, and he did, and he is thrown out for his doubles 2-3. Well, that story is true. You could see, you know, he thought he was making fun of Pallone, and what he was doing was getting rid of his sunflower seeds. And there you see Robinson chugging down the first baseline. Social makes a good play because he got to throw it to the inside part of the bag. Uh, to avoid hitting Robinson with the throw. It's amazing. You look at that 45-foot lane halfway from home plate and down to the bag, and you rarely have an involved play with that lane, and the Dodgers had it happen three times in two games back-to-back -back on a recent road trip. Hmm. Larkin has grounded out twice. He's 0 for 2. And a breaking ball hit in the air to Gibson. Two down. Well, maybe he was making fun of him. In other words, there are ways to take sunflower seeds out of your mouth or the shells, and maybe he was doing something just to draw attention and give... And it happened to be Dave Pallone. Yes. Who has had a tough year. Well, yeah, last right, night he called right. the Bach in a tough situation yeah. against run sports. So, I don't know. Not Davey. No. Davey who came in to pitch last night. Off speed, and he missed with it to Sabo. Sabo, double the left, single the left. The young Chris is two for two, hitting 282. A chopper to third, backhanded by Guerrero. Sidearms it over to Marshall. And a very easy inning, the first time that Hershiser has retired the Reds, one, two, three. And at the end of four and a half, two to one, Dodgers. The Dodgers leading the Reds two to one, and Steve Sachs followed by Mike Davis and then Kirk Gibson. Sachs grounded to third and single to left. He's one for two. Breaking ball, one ball and no strikes. All the scoring in the second inning. series tomorrow Tim Leary and Mario Soto and then it'll be the battle between the Dodgers and the second place Astros for four games. Barry Larkin taking care of that ground ball one away. The Astros will be here Friday excuse me Monday at 510 Tuesday and Wednesday nights and Thursday afternoon. It'll be a big series. Davis single to left and grounded out one for two Mike hitting 214 <laughs> under the heading of what a difference a year makes last year at this time Mike Davis for Oakland had 13 home runs and 33 RBIs and was hitting over 300. I mean, there are a lot of fellas, we were showing you some of the names, who do not have any home runs yet, but when you get Marty Barrett and Ozzie Guillen and a few others, you don't expect them to be hitting home runs anyway. 
a chopper to first. When you're talking about Mike Davis and Jim Rice, you're talking about guys who hit home runs. I mean, he's hit as many as 24, 22 last year. Rice has hit over 45 one year. In fact, he hit 46 in 1978. Mike Davis and Jim Rice still without a home run. That's that's shocking. In the Mike Davis case, I'm sure they say, well, he has to make an adjustment. The, the difference in the leagues, but uh, that's still, I'll tell you, a home run is a home run. Wow. Now, Joe Carter's making a lot of noise for Cleveland, but Mel Hall Mel is Hall. not heard from. As I say, McGee doesn't figure to hit too many, but there's Mel Hall, Jim Rice. Gander hits a couple. I expect him to hit one. But Rice and Davis, that's shocking. In the National League, it certainly would appear to be the year of the pitcher. Seems like every other day, I'm talking about somebody with a no-hitter or a near-perfect game. Even last night, John Smiley, the left-hander for Pittsburgh, a one-hitter. A triple by Wallach. He balked him in for the only run he allowed. But every other day in the National League, there's somebody coming that close. You think the ball is dead? Ground ball to first, and yeah, that takes care of Gibson and the Dodgers. And at the end of five, it is Dodgers two and the Reds one. Two to one Dodgers. We go to the sixth inning with Cal Daniels, Eric Davis, Paul O'Neill. Three of five innings, the leadoff man has gotten aboard. That's quite a matchup there, isn't it? Nolan Ryan, Mike Lacoste, scoreless in the fourth. Another leadoff man is aboard. That's a tough way for Hershiser to pitch. So far, he's getting away with it. So four out of the six innings, the leadoff man has reached. But Hershiser is still leading two to one. Eric Davis has struck out and popped up 0 for 2. Two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. One run, six hits for the Reds. Last year, the Reds won 10 of the 18 against the Dodgers. They're trying to recover from all their injuries. Leon Durham out with a bad back. Tracy Jones with a bad knee. Asoski returning, but he's playing on a bad ankle. Milner is on drug rehab. Murphy has a tender arm, and Franco has a date with an orthopod to check his knee today. So they brought up Frank Williams. It's been a, a tough couple of months for the Reds. Davis had a hamstring pull. Buddy Bell has had a bad knee. He really been bothered by the injury. Foul back. 0 oh 2 to Eric Davis. Hirschheiser is really laying that ball on the outside part to play those two strikes. He's in good shape now because he can just work any way he wants, but. He's got Davis chasing that ball. His pitch is either on the corner or just missing to the outside part of the plate. Really, if he hits them, they're ground balls to the shortstop, and you got yourself a double play. Oh, and two the count. Of course, talking about double plays, he's basically a ground ball pitcher. Ball one. The ground outs to air as far as ground balls and fly balls with Hershiser. About the third highest in the league. It has always been one of his trademarks. And Eric Davis continues his slump. 0 for 3 has struck out twice today. He has struck out 52 times in he's played 47 games. And that pitch was where the other two were, right on an outside part of the plate. I mean, almost out of the zone, but too close to take. And you can see he just he's already shifted his weight and then starts to swing like even if he does it, it's going to be all arms. You know, he's not just slumping this year. Not really at all. He has been in a slump for almost a year. It is still the big leagues. It's what have you done for me lately? And after that great start a year ago, Eric was tearing up the league. And he has been a an average player hitting in the 250s since last June. Marvelous talent. 
but they're still giving him a tough time. He struck out twice last night, so that's four times he's gone down in the two games. Fly ball to center shallow, and Shelby is there. So holding at first base is Cal Daniels with two outs. And there's not a darn thing that Pete Rose can do about it except play him and watch him. Nothing at all. He's got a, as he said, you know, watch my ball club. I mean, they talk about an attitude change. They're hustling, doing what they can. We just can't get the base hit. Say one thing, he hasn't really tried to force the issue, though. Nope. We haven't seen a hit and run play. Nope. We haven't seen anybody really try to run much. Although Cal Daniels was thrown out trying to steal in the third. Though two down, the tying run is at first. The tying run's been first all afternoon for the Reds. Nick Ososki struggling, hurt his ankle. Now they're saying, well, when Bell gets well and Durham is back, when is Ososki going to play? Because Sabo has just come out and made Buddy Bell a first baseman. Ososki with four home runs, 19 runs batted in. Dodgers two, Reds one, top of the sixth inning. Soto tomorrow. Daniels has stolen eight out of 13. He's the runner at first. Not going anywhere. Two and one. Well, if you're going to make something happen, if you're Pete Rose, this would be a pretty good pitch right here. So Daniels the tying run at first with two out on the sixth and we'll see if Pete rolls a dice here with Asoski. Daniels not going. And it's just as well he wasn't. Two and two the count. Took something off the curveball and Asoski was way out in front. Hirschheiser's had pretty good control of his pitches. He's got some fastballs up which is unusual for him. As he throws that ball at good sinker. But for the most part, he's had good control of about three pitches. And he's really only walked one. He walked two, but one of them intentionally. So he's been right on the plate. Two balls and two strikes with two out, two to one Dodgers, sixth inning. In on the hand. So with a full count, they can turn Daniels loose. And Sochip reminding the infield two out. They picked up after the rains. And the Mets leading the Cubs 1-0. That was Les Lancaster and Ron Darling. Three and two. Daniels ready to go. There he goes. And it's inside. So that puts the tying run at second base. You hear the crowd roaring. And they're not roaring because of the walk. A lot of folks here with transistor radios and portable television sets trying to watch the Lakers. And Bo Diaz coming up. The Lakers have ripped it open now. They're leading by 10 in the third quarter, and the crowd is reacting in the background. Bo Diaz hit back to the box, fly to right, 0 for 2. Two on, two out in the sixth. And last night when they gave that final Detroit Celtics score, the roar went up. Celtics are not the most popular thing out here. Oh, no. Ball one. Fastball, and now Sochi's saying, hey, easy. Take it easy. Oral throwing beyond himself on that pitch. One and all. Lasorda going with his best today. Oral Hershiser, and he's leading two to one. Talking about best, he knows Nolan Ryan is at work against Mike Lacoste up at San Francisco and they're scoreless in the fourth. Fast ball down the pipe. One and one. And Nolan Ryan's amazing. To be able to throw as hard as he is throwing now and he's been doing it for so many, many years. Intimidating. Uh, remarkable. Great athlete. One and one to count to Bo Diaz. Time. Hits 
little trouble with the breaking ball to Asoski. And he's come back now to jump out in front of Bo Diaz. One ball and two strikes. Daniels at second. Asoski at first. Two to one. Dodgers six innings. Two out. Fastball. And it's hit into right center. But right there is Mike Davis. So he stayed with the fastball to get him. And the Reds lead two. And at the end of five and a half, it remains the Dodgers and Hershiser two, the Reds one. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Dodgers leading the Reds two to one in a game that has the pace of swimming underwater. Don't you always find, though, that after, say, a 13 to 5 game and all those hits last night, that a day game after a night mm -hmm. game with all those hits, the bats rest? Could be. It could be. I know usually the, the, the more erratic game of the week is on Sunday, where you play five or six night games and then suddenly you get the sunshine. Big rip by Guerrero. For Ron Robinson, he's getting to the sixth inning now. He's averaged less than six innings a start. And he's in the sixth today. 0-1 oh and one the count. Guerrero doing exercises between swings because it's been says he's had that bad back, the neck. There he goes. See that left, loosen up. When he yeah. raises that left arm up, we were mentioning that. That's a sure sign the left side of his neck is bothering him. Barolo to shortstop. And Barry Larkin, boy, you talk about picking it. One down. Guerrero, despite getting three hits last night, he had to take him out of the game. Hey, that first swing he took, he really hurt because you could see a grimace after he missed the swing. One out in the sixth inning. Guerrero still hit him well over 300 despite all of his ailments. Here's one that more swing. Left. Now watch his face. Yeah, right there. Ooh. Ay, caramba. One away, and Mike Marshall lined out and grounded out. He's 0 for 2. Fastball, and a little late getting around on it. Back in the seats, 0 and 1. and Will Clark arguing about a called strike in the fourth inning has been kicked out. Clark hit a three-run home, home run last night. Giants could ill afford to lose his bat, but he's gone. 0-2 to Mike Marshall. Well, I really think that the conference call that the American League crew chiefs had and Richie Phillips, I think it's the start of something, whereas if they don't like the suspension or the action taken by the league presidents, that they're going to start taking it into their own hands. Whether it's good or bad, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, but you can't usurp the power of the man who's in the office to direct things. That's pretty much what they did. They said, we think Billy Martin deserves more, and uh, we want to see it. One and two. It'll be an interesting development to watch. One and two to Mike Marshall. That's hit foul down the line out of play. There is an executive board. And you remember when Pete Rose appealed his suspension, he went before that board, three owners, people with other ball clubs, and they agreed with the National League president's suspension of 30 days. What the umpires are saying, as far as the American League is concerned, they sound like they're saying we should pass judgment on how long the man should get. Down. And Jerry Crawford, if you were not with us, uh, was umpiring the third today at the top of the show. He said that you have to be aggressive, and you better be aggressive, or the young, the players will try to uh, take advantage of it. And it's easier to calm a young umpire down than it is to pump him up. I don't know. John Shelby singled and grounded out. And, of course, he talked about a young umpire because it was a young umpire over in the American League who got involved with Billy Martin and vice versa. And that was a the point they made, too, that Billy picked his spots. Fouled away. Out of play, and the count 0-1. John Shelby singled up the middle. It was a picture play. Jeff Treadway diving and smothered and while on the ground fed the ball to Larkin who fired to first but Shelby hitting left-handed was able to beat it. 
And that means Shelby is hit in 19 straight. That's the longest streak in the National League this year. A drive to left. And Daniels going in the corner. Makes the play. Good outfielder finds his spot, and he did. You can see him look for that fence. Eight in a row retired by Ron Robinson. It's still two to one Dodgers, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local state. Catch Daniels made a good catch in that inning, and I tell you, the good outfielder knows exactly where he is. Watch him find himself right there. He sees how far that fence is, and he's already got it in his sights, and he knows he's going to make that play easily now. Cal Daniels, that first name is somewhat unusual, Kalvoski. K-A-L-V-O-S-K-I. Kalvoski Daniels, any way you spell it, is quite a young ball player. Jeff Treadway, then Ron Robinson and Barry Larkin, the Dodgers leading 2-1 to one as we go to the seventh inning. 32,550 with over 35,000 in the house. Treadway walked intentionally, hit into a force play, 0 for 1. Ball one. He's got Guerrero on the move. One ball, no strikes. Slice foul off third down the line out of play. Remember, in the last six innings, the Reds have been able to get the leadoff man on base in four of the six innings. And they've only gotten one of those leadoff men around to score. So they're still losing two to one. Fredway hitting 277. On the corner. One and two. Hershiser, as we look at him studying, has had a high of eight strikeouts this year. He only has three strikeouts today. He's had a high of five walks. He's done that twice. And he's walked three today. runs he's really only pitched one bad game Laurel pitched in Pittsburgh and they knocked him around in seven innings they roughed him up for seven earned runs and they beat him but in every other game he has pitched very very well one and two to count to Jeff Treadway two and two Bell is out on deck to bat for Ron Robinson. Bell and Larkin. Fouled away. Frank Williams, who has just called up for Nashville. Remember, John Franco has the bad leg. Rob Murphy, a tender arm. And Frank Williams, sidearm almost a submarine right-hander who was originally with the San Francisco Giants and pitched well for the Reds. He's been called up and he's in the pen. Two and two to count to Treadway. We still up there 2-2. Two -two. Ball bouncing right up into the seats. Hershiser seven and two with a record of four and one here at Dodger Stadium. As we mentioned at the start of the game, he is very tough. This is an ideal combination for him, pitching in the daytime at Dodger Stadium. Line down the left field line, foul ball. The wrong way, Treadway. He'll have to come back. You know, seeing Buddy Bell in the on deck circle, man, we were talking about curveball hitters that you hear about our breaking ball hitters you hear about but you very rarely see him I remember Bert Blylevin when they, they asked him who probably has as good a curveball as I've ever seen I asked him about who were the toughest men to get out and who could hit his curveball Buddy Bell was one of the five yeah wow Two runs, seven hits, one run, six for the Reds, and there's another leadoff man getting aboard, and that could be for extra bases. Treadway runs well, 
And he is into second base standing. And now Davis having trouble getting the handle. And Treadway is to third. The tying run 90 feet away with nobody out. And there'll be an error charge to Davis, his first error of the year. So the last of the Mohegans is Mike Davis, the last Dodger to play 30 games or more without an error. And he commits an error trying to field a double, and he turned it into a double plus to put Treadway at third. As you can see with that picture, he can't understand it, and it was just a simple error. Watch this. Now, it looks like he's got it. Whoops. No, he doesn't. By the way, Scratch Bell. There's the error right there. This throw was something. He tried to throw it all the way to third on the fly, I believe. Davey Collins is going to come up and bat instead of Bell. So Collins will come up and bat. With a runner at third, the tying run, and nobody out here in the seventh inning. I love the story about Davey Collins. He has played with eight different teams in his major league career. And somebody said to him, did you ever hit against Ken Brett, who played with ten different teams? And Collins says, yes, I remember hitting against Brett. I don't remember who I was with, and I don't remember who he was with, but I did hit against him. So here's Davey trying to pick up the tying run from third. And down in the Dodger bullpen, Brian Holton begins to loosen up. Davey is from a city aptly named, considering his abilities, like Rapid City, South Dakota. And he can run. He's stolen as many as 79 bases. He did that for the Reds a few years ago. So Collins, a switch hitter, and hitting in the 250s from this side of the plate, and hitting almost 500 with runners in scoring position. 1 1. And a fly ball to shallow left. Gibson coming to the line, and there's no play on Treadway. He has to stay. As Gibson fired into Dave Anderson. So Collins is unable to get him home. One out. The tying run is still a third. And Barry Larkin, the batter. You know, Gibson's throw was coming to the plate. And Anderson, I thought, made a wise play by cutting it off. Because he almost doubled off the base runner at third. Now watch this. He leaps and grabs that, and Treadway gets back in good shape. It was close, and Anderson really ad-libbed that play when he saw that Treadway was not going to score. It's one of those heads-up plays that you've never seen the box score. Here now is an interesting confrontation with the runner at third and one out, a battle between Hershiser and Larkin. And a bounce to Hershiser, and they've got the runner hung up. Guerrero will tag him out down to second base goes Larkin big play it's a big play because you get the man at third but you can see Larkin he hustles all the way to second base Treadway stays in that rundown long enough and when Guerrero gets into foul territory there's no chance to make a play on Larkin who goes to second base he's in scoring position you know we were saying an interesting confrontation because when Pete Rose sent Barry Larkin up to the plate he knew that Barry Larkin in trying to get a runner home from third with less than two out had done it seven out of eight times this year but it didn't work that time as Barry hit back to the box but did take second on the rundown so the tying run is still there but the old cliche about spinning your wheels, boy, the Reds have certainly been doing that today. They've yeah. had the chances. So here is Sabo, a double and a single in three trips. Another thing about Pete Rose, and it's time for him to scratch his head in bewilderment, the Reds do not have a hit with two out. The leadoff man has gotten on base in five out of seven, but then they just leave him one way or another on the base path. They've left six, and this would really gall him. He had the tying run at third and nobody out. Now you have two out and a runner at second, so they're going backward. 
it's a game like this that when you talk about managing you say the one big thing they need is patience because really what can you do sit there and just twist and turn I know one thing if Mar shot makes another call and they lose this one it'll be a collect call <laughs> two and oh in there two and one the Reds this year have been shut out four times Pete's team has shut the opposition down four times and here they are with one run so far today breaking ball and a good one two and two that was a thoroughly big league curveball all the way and that was the best one he threw because he threw it hard and had it spotted well he's been kind of just dropping that curveball in there Remember, Sabo doubled way back in the first inning and was picked off second base. Daniels thrown out stealing in the third. And now the rundown getting Treadway between third and home, and it continues for Pete Rose. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Curveball hit into right field. Base hit. Here comes Larkin to score, and going to second base is Sabo, and again Davis had trouble fielding the ball. Mike must be taking his eye off the ball to see where the runner is. Well, Sable may have uh, caused that because he was not hesitating when he got to first base. He was going to draw that throw and at least get caught in a rundown. And Davis looked like he was watching that. He should pick this ball up easily. Now he looked up right there. That's exactly what he did. And then that thing got real hot on him, and he needed a stick to really beat it, to stop it from moving. And that's a big, big error. They have not flashed there. Now they're putting double. Oh. So it is a double. That means Sabo has two doubles today. And of course, he's up there with the leaders. He is third in the league in doubles. And Lasorda fit to be tied in a 2 2 tie. And Pete Rose finally has reason to laugh with Tony Perez and Tommy Helms. Now there is a picture. There's the, the big red machine of the middle 70s, at least a good portion thereof. Pete Rose, Tony Perez, and Tommy Helms. So you give Sabo a lot of credit because that was a good pitch, and he did not try to pull it, and he hit it to the opposite field. But I say it's a very charitable double. Although Sabo was running hard, Davis should have come up with that ball. So Oral Hershiser thought he was off the hook when he was able to get Treadway between third and home, only to have Sabo come up with his third hit to get the Reds even. And now... Cal Daniels. In fact, Eric Davis with two out and Daniels at first and Sable at second. And there's ball one. See, Sable doesn't have that big a lead off second base. They're not even paying attention to him, but he can't begin to even think about getting picked off now. Davis has struck out twice and popped up. Hitting 229. Fastball right at the knuckle. Two and oh. So the youngster from Fremont High here in town. Hershiser is due to bat third when the Dodgers hit in the bottom of the seventh inning. So he's on very thin ice. Lasorda this year does not hesitate to go to the bullpen because it has been so effective. Breaking ball, strike 10 1. The Dodger bullpen this year has 1 9, 13 saves, and an earned run average of 2. So Lasorda won't hesitate if he feels that Hershey is showing any signs or if he wants to use a pinch hitter. 2 and 1. So Deuce is wild on double fours. Eric Davis. A 2-2 two -two tie, two on, two out. Sabo at second, Daniels at first. If you have any kind of a memory, anytime you look at number 44, you think of either Henry Aaron or Willie McCovey. 
and Reggie, whose number will be retired in New York, I think, next week, maybe. Two, two tie, two runs, eight hits for the Reds. Two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. Four walks, but two of those walks intentionally granted. Half swing, what do they say? No swing, says Frank Foley. And the Dodgers were ready to leave the field. Well, that was the pitch that got Eric Davis the last time. It's a breaking ball. It's out of the strike zone, and he chased it the last time. This time he starts for it, but he really holds up. And I would say in the questionable area, but Sochi doesn't believe it, but it, what he believes doesn't count because fully at first base is no swing. Now three and two, two out, a definite advantage for the Reds. The runners will be going. Sabo from second, Daniels from first, and Davis waiting. On deck, Paul O'Neill. Runners go. Breaking ball is fouled away. The Hershiser, enough confidence with the breaking ball to throw a three and two. And not only throwing it, but spotting it well. That's the difference. I mean, that ball was a tough ball to hit. Davis, unless he goes to the opposite field, really is going to just hit the ground ball trying to pull that curveball because it is really, it's, it's a tough breaking curveball. Hershiser struck out Davis in the first inning, struck him out in the sixth inning, and got him to pop up in the third. Boy, that's a drought for Eric the Red. Three and two. Runners go. Fastball got him swinging. The third time he has rung up Eric Davis today. One run, two hits, and two left in a 2-2 tie. Here's another edition of Characters of the Game. Characters of the Game. Brought to you by A&W. Sit back and try yourself an A&W root beer or cream soda. Following in the footsteps of such celebrated oddballs as Jay Johnstone and Tug McGraw, meet baseball's newest clown prince, Mets relief pitcher Roger McDowell. His gags include teammate impersonations and his soon-to-be-famous dugout handstand. The worst part about that was I had to put my uniform pants on, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of tall and, and thin, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of room, so I had to put my head in with one of my arms, which looked like one of my legs. Next time, I think we're going to get Rusty Staub's old pants so that we have that baggage there and have the extra added uh, area where I can put my head in, and hopefully it'll look a bit, little bit more realistic. All right, Roger, we'll wait with bated breath for that one, but for now, welcome to the club. You're a most inventive character. There is a town in California, Davis, California. For the moment, at least, it's transposed to Los Angeles. Mike Davis has committed an error, juggled another one, and then Eric Davis has struck out for the third time today. Tough day for the Davis boy. Yes, it is. And that's when it's tough to be an outfielder, Ben. As a catcher or an infielder, you worry really about positioning this, that, and the other thing. A catcher, you're worried about what you're going to call. But the outfielder, you have to kind of stand out there and think about today's hand. And when you've had three strikeouts like Eric Davis, it, it makes for a long, long day. It just shows you how tough it is to play this game. And I can remember a year ago, I mean, they were talking about Eric Davis as if he was one foot from the Hall of Fame. Frank Williams just returned from the minor leagues. Ball one. With the Reds last year, Williams was 4-0, and and he had a couple of saves. Frank, as we mentioned earlier, we first saw him with the San Francisco Giants. Ball two, 2-0. Two Mike Sosia flied to left, single to right. Tom Browning, the left-hander, is throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. Ball three. There's Browning, normally a starting pitcher. Browning has not relieved this year. 
But of course, with Franco hurt and Rob Murphy's tender arm, they need a left-hander down there. And so she opens up the seventh with a walk. Jimmy Cephalo is in New York, so let's make the trip cross country for an update. All right, Vin and Joe, the Giants are on the board at Candlestick. Nolan Ryan on the mound for the Astros, but with Candy Maldonado aboard, Mike Eldredi gets all of it, his first of the year. A two-run shot to right, giving the Giants a 2 to nothing lead, now in the fifth inning. Now back to Dodger Stadium. Vin? All right, Jim, and it shows you the Giants can lose a Will Clark and drop a Mike Aldretti in there and hardly miss a beat. So associate first, Dave Anderson, the batter. Anderson single popped up, and the Reds are looking bunt. Hershey's are on deck. Has to be a good one because Sosha can't run, and Sable's charging hard at third. Huh? One ball and no strikes. Dave Anderson has had nine at bats in his young career against Frank Williams, and he's still looking for his first hit. So he's 0 for 9 against him. Of course, Williams, in the words of Roy Campanella, will give you a jelly leg anyway because he comes by way of third base so much. Like that. In there. One and one. Boy, that's tough. Uh, you're a right hand hitter, and he comes, he's throwing around the corner. Hey, you just bail out is what you do. It's hard to keep your body in one piece. One and one. So she's short lead. Chopper foul outside of third. One and two. The Dodgers trying to extend the agony. The Reds have lost six in a row, eight out of nine, and ten out of twelve. The Dodgers with a modest two-game winning streak. And that's one of the things that causes those streaks is you get a relief pitcher coming in the seventh inning. He walks the first batter, and he's immediately in trouble. That base on balls in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, it'll kill you. Of course, he's just off the plane from Nashville. A chopper down to short. In front of him goes Sabo for the force play. Nice play, because if Larkin feels it, he's going away from the play, and they might not have been able to get Sosia. But Sabo took things into his own hand. Boy, he's impressive. Yes, he is. I mean, he came in, uh, on, looked like the butt on this play. He just takes charge. And he they would not have gotten Socia at second base. He wasn't even close with Sabo taking the play. So a big play by Chris Sabo, heads up by the young Cincinnati third baseman. And the batter now is Oral Hershiser. Hershiser, an infield single, and hit back to the box. With one out, he still might bunt. He can handle that bat, though. They can switch off. He sure indicated bunt mighty, mighty early like he was decoying. He's had only one hit, but as we mentioned in his previous at-bat, he makes contact. And they have him bunting. Williams is going to go to first base in the dirt, and a good recovery by Treadway. So Hershiser stays out of the double play to get the hot hitter up there with a go-ahead run at second base. Steve Sachs will be coming up. Williams was going to first base all the way. He wasn't even thinking second base. You can see, I tell you, because Anderson did not have that good a jump getting off first base. Had a feeling that Hershiser might bunt because he's the best bunter on the Dodger pitching staff. So he sacrifices to stay out of the double play, keep the inning alive. And it'll be up to Sachs and a very good play by Jeff Treadway. Now Sachs, who has not done much against Williams in the past, he is one for three, a couple of ground balls and a single to left. He's hitting in the low 200s against Frank Williams. To look ahead when the Reds come up in the eighth, O'Neill, Asaski, and Diaz. Sachs coming off a five for six game last night. First time in his career he had a five hit game. Now he's in a position to hurt. And he has been very successful hitting over 400 with runners in scoring position. In there. Frank Williams. Called up. Pat Basillo sent out to Nashville.
No balls and one strike. We're in the seventh with two out in a 2-2 tie. Ground ball to the right at Treadway. Backhands off. Bound throw. Got him. A couple of fine kids on the infield. Chris Sabo and Jeff Treadway. Not to mention Barry Lark in the shortstop. And the Dodgers are turned away empty-handed. So at the end of seven, the Reds two and the Dodgers two. 20 years ago today, Don Drysdale, a kid from nearby Van Nuys, stood on the mound at Dodger Stadium against the Pittsburgh Pirates and threw his sixth consecutive shutout. He went on to string a pearl, 58 and a third. Consecutive scoreless innings. Now Don, one of the broadcasters of the Dodger games here in Los Angeles, 20 years ago today. You can hear the crowd reacting in the background. The Lakers have put the Dallas Mavericks in the barn. In talking about this day, it is a very big day in Dodger history. Drysdale's string continued on this date 24 years ago, Sandy Koufax pitched his third no-hitter against Philadelphia in Connie Mack Stadium, facing only 28 batters. In fact, had he not walked Richie Allen on a 3-2 pitch, Koufax would have pitched a perfect game that day, 2-2. Two and, two. and on this day, 16 years ago, Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, and Sandy Koufax had their uniform numbers retired. The final score, the Lakers 117, the Dallas Mavericks 98. So it'll be the Lakers and Detroit. Two and two, the count of Paul O'Neill. Two singles fly to center. Fly ball down the left field line, peeling off foul, Gibson in pursuit, no play. Five of the seven innings, the Reds have gotten the leadoff man aboard. And the crowd with a chance to react one more time to the Lakers' victory. So to Dr. Jerry Buss, Jerry West, Pat Riley, our heartiest congratulations and good luck against Detroit. Ground ball to the right side. One away. To get a further update on the Laker victory, we'll dribble to Jimmy Cephalo in New York. All right, Vin, as you mentioned, seventh game of the Western Conference Finals at the Forum in L.A. James Worthy scores 14 points in the third quarter to lead the Lakers past the Mavericks 117-102. to It'll be the Pistons and Lakers game one Tuesday night at the Forum. Vin? And the batter now will be Nick Asaski, who takes ball one. Two tie in the eighth inning. The Sasky single to center struck out and walked. He's one for two. Foul ball. In and out of the Dodger dugout and the count two and one. The Reds scored a run in the second. The Dodgers scored two in the second, and that's the way it stayed until the Reds got even in the seventh, and now are in the eighth. I'm sure we have a lot of folks joining us who have been watching the basketball game. And Guerrero still hurting, but still playing. There is a reason why he's playing in the eighth inning in a 2-2 tie. That reason is he is due up third when the Dodgers hit in the bottom of the eighth inning. Then I would think he'd be coming out for Jeff Hamilton. We'll see. A busted bat and a flare to center. Base hit. So Asaski cracks his bat, but parachutes one into center field for a base hit. That's pure strength when you're able to muscle that ball that far when you hit it off the handle like that. So nine hits for the Reds, and the batter will be Bo Diaz. 
This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Luis Quinones running for a Sasky and a very frustrated Bo Diaz will step in at the plate. The reason we say he's frustrated, he has had somebody on base in every inning and he has failed to advance a runner. He's hit the ball hard to right field. Davis is like playing him as if he were a left hand pool hitter. He's got a gap between first and second. And Socia trying to see if they want to put a play on because the Reds have not made anything happen. Although you would expect them to try something. Score tied 2 2. They did in the second inning when Diaz came up. Runners at first and second and nobody out. The runners were going. Diaz hit the ball back to Hershiser who did not have a chance to do anything but throw the first. Then in the fourth inning, with a runner at first, Bo hit a fly ball to right field. With two on and two out in the sixth inning, he hit a fly ball to right field. He's struggling with just four hits in his last 27 at-bats. It looked like Mike could put a pitch-out play on. Well, then they shouldn't have thrown over to first. No, you want that runner to run. That's exactly right. Let's see what he does here now. Timeout as Kinonis, the pinch runner, tying the laces on his shoe. Kinonis came up last night replacing the bouncing ball, whose name is Leo Garcia. I think Garcia has been up and down four times. Here it comes. I believe it's a pitch out, man. It looked like it. And he's thrown over there. He's fisting it. I just well, maybe, it. maybe instead of a sign for a pitch out, he's that's giving him a sign to throw base. to first. Yeah, let's watch it. He's looking for help from the bench. Now he, went, now he went the signal, but you can do three deuces using this pitch out. One and one to count to Bo Diaz. Really struggling with the bat, hitting in the 220s. Hey, Hershiser does a good job of keeping the runners close. He really does. Balk appeared very important last night. The only run against John Smiley was balked in from third. Atlee Hammaker had a balk called on him. That gave Houston a big run last night. One and one. On the corner. This umpire crew is, uh, I think they're the leaders. Over 70 box call. Mm. They're, they're, they're way out in front. I don't know if they get frequent flyer points or something. what, but yeah. they get something. <laughs> one and two the count. One out, remember, and Quinones at first. Two balls and two strikes. The count to Bo Diaz. Down in the bullpen for Cincinnati is Jose Rio. If they get down to Frank Williams' spot, Rose evidently thinking about a hitter. What a day for Diaz as he strikes out. Known as holding at first with two outs. And the batter will be Jeff Treadway. He took something off the curveball here, and I mean Diaz was way out in front. So Bo Diaz having a rather discouraging day as he goes back into the Cincinnati dugout. And Pete Rose can just keep sending him up there and hope something happens. Treadway walked intentionally, hit into a force play, and doubled in the seventh inning. Pop fly, back a third, slicing foul, out of play. You remember Treadway in the seventh doubled, and Mike Davis made his first error of the year, allowing Treadway to get the third. And Treadway was erased on a comebacker by Larkin. Jeff has made a couple of nice plays and notably in the last inning in the seventh inning flashing way to his right to fill up the middle on a ball hit by Sachs. He made a good play for the last out preventing Anderson from perhaps scoring. Good player. I would think sometime during this season Treadway's going to play against everybody. I don't see how. He will sit him down against every left-hander between now and the end of the season. That would seem to be stretching it too much. 0-1. Oh, 
cued foul off the end of the stick. Down to Bruce Kim. 0-2. When the Dodgers bat in the bottom of the eighth, Mike Davis, Kirk Gibson, Pedro Guerrero. But Tom Browning is down in the pen, remember. Buddy Bell has come on the on deck circle again. Oh, and two. Now the other way. So Jeff Treadway hitting him every which way. And it's a 2 2 tie with Lewis Kinonis. Running at first. Wow, look at the Giants. Matt Williams, the other night in Phoenix, had four home runs against Albuquerque. Now he hits one in the big leagues, a jackpot, a grand slam off Nolan Ryan. And the Giants leading big, 8 nothing. In the dirt, and so she can't find it, and down to second base goes Quinones. That's always a tough play. When that ball goes off, you shouldn't go eyes like that one did. You never know where it goes. You always, the tendency is to start back, and the only, everybody in the ballpark sees it except you. It's a wild pitch. Now you'll see Mike start back. He's looking back there, and now he realizes, but it's way too late. With two strikes on Jeff Treadway, we'll see if they still pitch to him. You have the right hand hitting Buddy Bell on deck. Tiebreaker at second in the first of Luis Quinones. He came from the Cubs deal with Cincinnati for Bill Lambro. Showed him the fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, two out. A 2-2 two -two tie in the eighth and a runner, Canonis, at second base. Breaking ball, golf foul down the right field line into the seats. Boy, did he lift that thing. <laughs> that was way out of the zone, but with two strikes, he wasn't about to take any chances. It was low, it was inside, but Treadway had a pretty good cut at it. He does not have a home run. He has 14 runs batted in this year. 32,550 paid, about 35,000 in the house. And they've seen a tough ball game. 2-2 two -two in the eighth inning. And of course, the Dodgers could pick up a game on the Astros, who appeared to be buried up north, 8-0. The Reds trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Two and two. Ball three. So a full count to Jeff Treadway. And Hershey's an out. Working hard over the 130 mark. He's in the eighth. Roller foul. So Treadway fouling them all off. He has struck out only 10 times this year in over 150 at bats. So he's a tough out. That was a tough pitch that Hershiser threw. He didn't give in to him. It was a breaking ball, and three, two count, two outs. He still snapped it off. Three and two to Young Jeff. Kinonis at second, two out, two, two, top of the eighth. So Treadway really gave it a battle. And now Buddy Bell will come up and bat for Frank Williams. For Hershiser, that is the fifth walk he has given up. And Lasorda twisting and turning a little bit. 
That's the most walks that Hershiser has given up in a game. It's the third time this year he's walked five. In a game against St. Louis, he walked five and one. In a game against Philadelphia, he walked five and had no decision. And here is Bell. Gray's elegy. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. And the bells are not ringing this year. Buddy is muted. So is George. So is Jay. There they are. So I guess we change. Ask not for whom the bell toils. Fastball grounded to Sachs. And Hershiser out of the jam. No run. One hit, two left, and at the end of seven and a half innings, the Reds two, the Dodgers two. That's right, only three months away, the lighting of the flame in Seoul, and this will be a tantalizing feature of what's around the corner over the horizon. The Las Vegas Sports Festival, that's tomorrow, right here on NBC. Davey Concepcion, he can play second, short, even pitch if need be, and he's playing first today. That C on his left shoulder indicating he's the captain of the Red. So the veteran who has played so well since 1970 is at first, and Jose Rio, remember at the start of the game, we were talking about this kid, his father-in-law is Hall of Famer Juan Marichal. So I have to believe that's why he is wearing a number that was made famous by his dad in San Francisco, number 27. Rio will be pitching to Mike Davis, Kirk Gibson, and Pedro Guerrero. Little roller up along first, right to Concepcion. One pitch, one away. So Mike Davis, one for four, and Kirk Gibson, the batter. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning in a 2-2 tie. Jose Rio, he was originally signed, he's from the Dominican Republic, originally signed to a professional contract at the tender age of 16. He was in the Yankee organization, and actually he was about 19 and pitching for the Yankees. Won two and lost eight. Been involved with some big names in trades, Henderson, Parker. That's right, Ricky Henderson was the deal that sent him to Oakland. And then he came to Cincinnati with Tim Burtzis in the Dave Parker deal. Ground ball to the right side to Treadway. So two pitches, and he has two out. And now Pete Guerrero, and this might be, it might be Guerrero's last appearance in the game. We'll see. Guerrero flied to center, struck out, and grounded out. He's 0 for 3. Normally in a tough game late in the game the Dodgers finish up with Jeff Hamilton at third. We'll see if that holds up today. Guerrero with a bad neck and a sore back has fly to center struck out and grounded to short. So the Dominican Republic is well represented here Rio and Guerrero. forced to take it after the other two guys hit the first pitch taken all away and Rio just could not throw it for a strike. He's behind two and all now Mike Marshall on deck. Him. 
So after getting Davis and Gibson, he walks Guerrero, and that brings up Mike Marshall. Ron Robinson did not walk a batter. Frank Williams walked one. And now Rio will walk. Marshall has been in a slump, showing signs of coming out of it last night with a couple of base hits. Today, lined out and grounded out twice. Strike. On one. Two runs, nine hits for the Reds, two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. inning in a 2-2 tie and despite the fact he has a sore neck and a bad back Pete Guerrero is at third base 2-2 in the ninth Barry Larkin 0 for 4 will start it off then Chris Sabo and Cal Daniel right that's pitch 135 for uh, Hirschheiser so he's right at the brink and you can bet he must be feeling strong not to have anybody throwing back up in the bullpen have sure not parlayed that into anything. They've had ten hits and five walks plus an error and they have only two runs. They've left ten. The Rose just wondering he's gotten one of those leadoff men home. Just one. Sabo has had two doubles and a single. Guerrero shortens up. Sable's indicated early what he's going to do. Would you think he'd bunt on the road? I would think. He got Daniels on deck. There it is, and he fouled it off. Sabo has zero sacrifices. And I'll tell you, Guerrero, true, he's got the bad back and all that, but he was the one closest. Marshall, he's kind of a stranger over there at first base. I mean, that's not his normal position, and he was way back, yet he was bunting down the third base. Now, he took a good look at his third base coach, Sabo did, and you just wonder what's going to happen here, but they're having trouble scoring runs, so we'll watch. See if he shows bunt. He does, and the Dodgers pitch out. One ball, one strike. That's unusual. I mean, uh, it is a spell. I could see at home we're playing for that winning run, but on the road, and you got a kid who's obviously making contact. Three for four. The whole thing. I mean, the social pitching out there. Mm -hmm. Harry Larkin at first has stolen 17 bases. He's still indicating bunt. You see that hand slide off the bat handle when Hershiser made his first move. Backing off the rubber. One ball, one strike. I was watching the batter, and it looked like he's going to swing away. So you can be ready for anything. Guerrero's still looking bunt. Larkin has stolen 17 out of 21. So they have to keep an eye on him. And a swing and a fly ball to right field. So I guess they said to Sabo, try to bunt, then try to take a shot at right. And he's down, and Larkin is still at first. One out, and Cal Daniels the batter. The Dodger bullpen, Jay Howell and Brian Holton, throwing back of Hershiser, who's getting right around the 140 pitch mark. Cal Daniels walked, hit into a force play, singled, and was walked intentionally. He's one for two. We'll watch Larkin at first. Little roller to Marshall. Now they need a tag at second base, and he's in there already ahead of it. Once Marshall stepped on the bag, that removed the force. They had to tag Larkin, and he beat the throw. 
It's one of those split decisions that an infielder has to make. Marshall thought he could get him. I'll say one thing. He came up throwing. I'm not so sure he wouldn't have got him if he fires right there. He would have gotten him, but he thought double play, and the tag is what, hey, that ball was there ahead of him. Just did get underneath it. Yes, sir. It was a nice play. Good play by Marshall. And a very good slide by Barry Larkin. It was an aggressive play by Marshall. He, he goes right to second base when he gets the ball. He gets the force, but he felt double play, and it didn't work out that way. But I tell you, he made a strong throw. By the way, Cal Daniels, who hit that ground ball, has grounded into seven double plays. He leads the Reds in that area. Seven. Well, here is Eric Davis. Eric Davis and Bo Diaz have had very long, dismal days under the sun here in Los Angeles. Not to mention under the lights. And did that get him? Yep. So Eric Davis, who struck out three times today, is hit by the pitch. Hershey is down from the mound, so I assume he's apologizing. And Davis says something as he walks up towards first. He was coming inside. He didn't. I mean, you strike the man out three times and you're in the ninth inning. You're not about to hit anybody. Davis twice holding his left hand up. I don't know whether he was saying, look, I don't want to hear anything about it. Or you don't have anything to worry about. I'm not going to charge the pitcher. But twice he held his left hand up to Harvey and then the second time to Hershiser and Harvey. Got him on the left shoulder. So Eric is at first, Larkin is at second, two out in the ninth inning in a 2-2 tie, and Paul O'Neill, who is two for four, coming up. O'Neill singled to right and to left, flied to center and grounded out. On deck is Davy Concepcion. One and all. We'll duck in the scores for you. Toronto wins big. The Mets in a tough one with the Cubs. In there. The Giants ripped it open. Houston trying to recover. Matt Williams a grand slam on that one. And in basketball, the Lakers put the Mavericks away. So it'll be Los Angeles and Detroit in the showdown. One and one to Paul O'Neill. Larkin at second, Davis at first, two out. Davis has stolen 16 out of 17. Larkin 17 out of 21. So you know the Reds have two very good runners out there on the base pad. Ball two. After O'Neill, Concepcion. I would think Lasorda is really keeping an eye on Hershiser because he has made a lot of pitches. He's getting close to 150. Yes, I think. sir. He's made 143. They tell me right now. That's Bill Russell with Tommy. Breaking ball. 
see the replay, and there you see Lasorda taking that long walk. It didn't really bite if it was the breaking ball, and I know it wasn't that good sinker. Well, Pete Rose, man, that put a smile on his face. It's been a long time coming. So Hershiser surrenders his eighth home run. He is high on the Dodgers staff. Paul O'Neill will get a hero's welcome. And for Paul O'Neill, his third home run of the year, he has 19 RBIs. And it is 5-2 Cincinnati in the ninth as they try to break a six-game losing streak. Davy Concepcion finishing up at first base for Nick Asaski. 4 1. Now you look ahead and wonder about the Dodgers as Tony Perez and Pete Rose feeling much better about things. The Dodgers will have Shelby, Sochan, Anderson do up. Reds have lost six straight, eight out of nine, ten out of twelve, and they've lost all four on the road. Breaking ball, one and two to Davey. Hitting like a pitcher right now. <laughs> Five runs, 11 hits for the Reds, two runs, seven hits for the Dodgers. Half swing, fouled it off. Concepcion is not facing one of his favorite pitchers. In his career, Davey has had 20 at-bats against Hershiser, and he has one hit. One murmur of protest. Two and two. So he hit the man he had struck out three times and gives up the home run to the man who had a couple of hits against him. And he takes care of Concepcion, and there's certainly no surprise there. But the damage is more than done. Three runs, two hits, nobody left. At the end of eight and a half, Reds five, Dodgers two. Never mind the loneliness of the long-distance runner, how about the long-distance pitcher? The starting pitcher gives up a three-run home run in the ninth inning, makes 151 pitches, and there isn't anything anybody can say to him. John Shelby, a strike. Shelby, a single, grounded out and flied out, so he's hit in 19 straight. 0 oh and 2. And Jose Rio trying to pick up a victory in relief. Rio is 5 and 1, and he appeared briefly last night, actually worked two innings. That's not really so briefly. Bet you that thing was in the 90s because he really threw that one hard. He's got a wonderful arm. It's a case of a kid who has taken a while to mature, and that's understandable, perhaps, coming from the Dominican Republic where he might have had a language barrier or a problem. But he's a youngster with a golden arm. And here is Mike Sosha, ball one. To you, a fastball like that, you'd have no trouble understanding. No, that's right. You make your point. One and all the count. In there. One and one. For the first time today, we can hear the ball hit in Bo Diaz's pillow. In there. And you know, after looking at Ron Robinson and then Frank Williams, then you get nothing but power pitching from Rio. And he just gets the sign and he goes right into it. He doesn't fool around. Fly ball into right center field. Could be trouble. It's going to be dropping. Eric Davis, a sprawling attempt, and gets the ball back in. So a fly ball single by Mike Sosha. Dave Anderson will give way to Danny Heap, who is looking for his first pinch hit of the year. That ball was kind of hit on the trademark, and Eric Davis, who was... Uh, maybe a little bit deep for Sosha, just could not catch up to it, but it was not stung. That ball was not hit hard. 
Danny Heath has done very, very well in a starting role. Coming off the bench, he is 0 for 9. Ball one. Five runs, 11 hits, no errors. Hershiser hoping and praying that somehow the Dodgers can get off the deck. Franklin Stubbs is on deck. 2 0. Franklin Stubbs, as he stands on deck, a power hitter, represents the tying run, and he wears the number of singles the Dodgers had last night 22. They still have nothing but singles today in there. Last night, the Reds had the double and the home run, but it didn't mean anything. Today, the Reds have had three doubles and a home run, and they're leading. Two and one. Foul back. Two and two to Danny Heap. You know, watching Rio pitch, I got to tell you the truth. I can't tell the difference in the strike zone. I mean, you know, they talked about changing and all that because he's throwing fastballs. I mean, that ball, that strike that was just called looked like it was low. The other one I thought was a strike was not. And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out with this new strike zone business. Breaking ball, beauty. So Danny Heap is called out on strike. Rose sitting back like a man saying, I think I got the right man working for me. Jose Rio has struck out two. And the batter will be Franklin Stubbs. Franklin Stubbs is two for ten as a pinch hitter. His best shot now would only get the Dodgers close. That made Danny Heap's appearance so very, very important. Reds five, Dodgers two, Cincinnati one out away from taking the burden off Pete Rose back. A six-game losing streak. Breaking ball. I tell you, when you throw as hard as this kid and you start throwing breaking ball for strikes, you're in a lot of trouble. And if you just come off the bench, it's even tougher. Concepcion obviously playing behind the runner, Sosha, who means nothing at this point. Fastball. So it well, starts your breaking ball, comes in with the 90s, and Rose figuring it's almost over. For Earl Hershiser, it's almost over as well. I mean, before Stubbs could even get a deep breath, he's up there with the count of two strikes. 0 oh 2 to Franklin. Breaking ball, and he just missed. Franklin is pretty much of a strikeout hitter. In other words, he strikes out almost half the time. He's kind of a feast or famine hitter, and Lasorda is looking for a feast. Fastball. Whoa. Huh. He oh. overthrew that one, Ben. <laughs> Wish we had a speed gun on that baby. Two and two. I tell you, when you can hear it hitting at that glove that Diaz is using, you really have to be throwing hard. Easter famine. It's a famine for Franklin Stubbs and for the Reds, somewhat of a feast as Hershiser loses at home at Dodger Stadium in the daytime. That's quite a story. The Reds doing it snap a six game losing streak. Tommy Lasorda sees one get away. Pete Rose is all smiles. And we'll be back here at Dodger Stadium where the Reds have beaten the Dodgers 5 to 2 after this message. NBC Miller Lite player of the game is the pride of Columbus, Ohio, Paul O'Neill. Miller Lite is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Paul O'Neill to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. With one swing, it was goodbye Columbus and goodbye Oral Hershiser and the Dodgers. A three-run blast into the right field bullpen to give the Reds a 5-2 victory. The Major League Baseball Game of the Week, brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. By GMAC, the official sponsor of America's Dreams. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Norelco Electric Razors, for a close and comfortable shave.
Well, it was a mountain to climb, wasn't it, to try and beat Hershiser in the daytime in Dodger Stadium, and the Reds did it. They did it. They snapped the streak. Pete Rose had a smile on his face. But, Ben, I think we, we saw a Cincinnati ball club. You saw him in the spring. You wonder, with all these good ball players, how they could keep losing. But we saw some pretty good young players. And how. And another thing that has to drive Lasorda crazy, every time there's a hit batter, it cost him Alfredo Griffin with a broken hand, Pedro Guerrero to a suspension. He had Brian Holden fine, and he had Tim Belcher kicked out of the game. Today, he hits a batter, and the next guy comes up with Eric Davis on, and O'Neill hits the home run. And Davis, who had done nothing. Well, for two great Americans, Bucky Guns and Kenny Edmondson, two of our dear pals, and for Joe Garagiola, as we say so long, from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, where the Reds beat the Dodgers 5-2. to two. Five runs, 11 hits, and no errors. And the Dodgers, two runs, eight hits, and one error. And wouldn't you know, now that we mention their names, they're giving me a stretch. They're giving you a stretch? Yeah. I can't believe that. Well, file this one under the heading of the best laid plans of mice and men. Rio, who was brilliant in relief, is now 6-1. and one. Oral Hershiser, who hit only his third batter of the year, but gave up his eighth home run, and the eighth home run killed him. And the Reds beat the Dodgers 5-2. to two. Now for Kenny and Bucky and Joe. Oh, you're not going to stretch it again. No, I've had it. This has been, we'll see you next week from Yankee Stadium. Have a wonderful weekend. So long.